All right, so I'm sitting here with uh, Andy Woodfine. Hello. He is a fantasy basketball legend. He's kind of the arsenal of fantasy basketball. <laughs> he's uh, always second, third, fourth place. And uh, he's a Brit living in Stockholm. That's right. One and, of many. Uh, and uh, quite a guy. So welcome to the podcast. Thank Andy. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me, man. I, I appreciate that you want to be here. I'm, I'm a, bit, a, a bit worried. Why? Because it's the first podcast I'm doing in English. Oh. And you know, one of those things, when, when you hear yourself, uh, like your voice recorded, it sounds so weird, you yeah. know? Dude, trust me, when you when I hear myself speaking Swedish, oh, it's, yeah. it's way worse, oh, I promise you. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my worst nightmare is to sound like, what's that guy's name? Tony, Tony Irving, the mm. dancing guy. Is yeah, that what you sound like? I, I hope not. I'm not going to try now because now I'm self-conscious. Luckily, you have, you have a... British accent, which everyone th thinks you sound distinguished. Well, yeah, it it depends on how many drinks I've had, really. Yeah, because it changes, dude. That's the one thing I discovered doing that podcast podcast with Stephen. Uh, <laughs> I curse so much when I'm drunk. <laughs> by, by the end of the podcast, I, I listen through it. I'm like, wow, that's I. I wanted to censor myself because I cursed too much. <laughs> so I, I, I think that was the first and last podcast I ended up drinking. Oh, well, I mean, we'll I don't, see. Know. We'll I don't see. know. Never say never. Or or I'll just have to challenge myself to, you know, not curse as much <laughs> when, when I have a few drinks. But, but it's, uh, very, it's crazy because when, when I have a few drinks, it depends on the company that I'm in. Yeah. I just Because I grew up a bit all over the place. So yeah. I'm a bit South African, a bit English. I've lived in Sweden, lived mm -hmm. in Ireland. And... If I'm with a bunch of South Africans and we're drinking, then I'll be South African Andy will come out like nice. magically. And then English people, I'll just be, well, what I, th what I think is myself, but you know, yeah. I guess that's normal Andy. <laughs> so English Andy is yourself. Is that what you, yeah, is that what you're saying? I think so. I think, yeah. I think, I think we're good with that. Yeah. You're, you're born in South Africa. Well, no, born in England, but when I okay. was like uh, six, seven months old, we, my parents moved back to South Africa from England. So they grew up in South Africa. Okay. And then I was born in England. So, you know, I got the British passport, which is great. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, Good not morning. anymore. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Brexit. But no, I, I was born in England and then spent sort of formative years, so I guess from like, yeah, seven, eight months to around eight, nine years old in South Africa and then okay. moved to England. So the crazy thing is, as of this year, I've lived in Sweden longer than any other country, mm. which is bizarre. Yeah. But I do find myself becoming more and more Swedish every day, which, sorry, but fucking terrifies me. Yeah. I love Sweden, but, you know. How do you, how do you notice that you're becoming more Swedish? I don't sit next to people on trains anymore. <laughs> like, like, yeah. So, and like, if people walk past me, I don't say hello to everyone anymore, yeah. which is yeah. also weird. Well, of course, you're not a psycho. Well, Why I mean, would you sit next to people on the subway? Like, <laughs> exactly. What's wrong with you? I don't know. I don't know how they do it in England. But I was actually in the UK in November uh -huh. and I sat down on the train and opposite a lady and she went, oh, it's a lovely day, isn't it? And yeah. I was like, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess so. I studied in Australia oh. and that was one of the things that I noticed that blew my mind that I, how much I noticed it. I was on the, um, it wasn't the, the subway, it was like a, a tram. Yeah. And I saw these two people, strangers, sit next to each other, have a conversation. And then, you know, one of them leaves when it's their stop. And I was standing beside watching. I'm like, wow, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And it just struck me like how much it struck me. It was like, But it's damn, weird. It's weird. It's super like, weird. When I first came here, I was, I mean, because England is when you don't expect there to be like massive culture clashes. Yeah. My wife's Swedish. And my God, like the first years of us being together, we clashed all the time because yeah. things that are totally normal and acceptable in England are like extremely forbidden or taboo here almost, mm. you know, like, yeah. I mean, even things like, um, not jealousy, but like how a couple interacts with each other yeah, yeah. and then how then one of those people can talk to another person. And in England it's like, Oh, gotta yeah. go claim my place. And it's, 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 it's ridiculous but when i first moved to sweden um it was a shock because you know my wife would 
we'd be out having a drink and she'd mm-hmm. go and talk to people and I'd be like, oh my God, she's going to leave me. <laughs> and she'd come back and I'd be like, whoa, so I guess I'm moving out, you know? And she was like, no, 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 I was just, just talking to them. I'm like, ah, yeah. oh yeah, you can do that without like leaving your partner. Yeah. But in the UK, it's, it's totally different. Very different. That and the level of aggression or lack of aggression in Sweden were the two mm-hmm. biggest things that surprised me. I've heard that from from a Scotsman. Yeah, that that he he said he missed it. <laughs> oh, when well, he's Scottish, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He said he missed it like when when two people at work are like upset at one another, uh, and you kind of like you know let it all out and right. then slam the door, and that's that's the end right, of it. Right. He said you can't do that here. Like <laughs> everyone just you know compresses it un- underneath and just never lets it go. Uh, and, you know, and, and he said he missed that, that you, you know, you just let your emotions uh, rise and, and that's the end of it. Right. And that's exactly how I function still to this day. You know, I'm very much like, I'm like the ping pong ball. I'm either super happy or down or up mm. or down, up or down. But I like to I wear my emotions on my sleeve 110% of the time. Yeah. And my wife is super stereotypical. Like you know, I'm massively stereotyping now, but Swedish in terms yeah. of she's pretty like stable all the time yeah, yeah. and you know she doesn't really suppress her emotions but she doesn't like let everything out like yeah. i do <laughs> so I've, i've definitely calmed down over the years like you've met me five uh, five well maybe 10 years ago <laughs> different person I tell you yeah different person w- would i have gotten along with that andy oh yeah probably because you can take it like you you you, you so? the amount of smack talk we have in the <laughs> fantasy basketball group um you know i think you're you know you're thick-skinned enough to take it you know Could i love be. a bit of banter and i like to poke the bear a little bit see yeah. see what happens but you got to be careful like, who, yeah who, yeah you can't who, do that with everyone no, no no but i i very much appreciate you know sweet you're right about the stereotypical sweet but of course there's a ton of Swedes who are not like that. Yes. And, you know, you just got to find your group. Right. Uh, exactly. I remember like one of the first nights out I ever have, like ever had in Sweden. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, I wasn't long here. I must've been living here maybe, I don't know, three weeks or four weeks or something. And then, uh, we went out to, oh, what was it? The base, uh, on the base of Strand, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we were dancing, having a good time and, you know, me, my wife, her friends, and, um, this group of people kept like bumping into us while we were dancing. Mm. And in England, that's like, Oh, you know, what's going to happen here. Yeah. So I turned around and I was like, guys, you know, come on, leave it out. And they turned around and went, sorry. And I was like, okay, huh. all right, all right. <laughs> cool. Carry on. Had a great night. Nothing of it. And then I was sitting outside waiting for them to all get their jackets. I was sitting on my own and I remember seeing this crowd of people coming towards me. It was the same people I'd just oh. talked to. And I was like, Oh fuck. So I literally, and this is how sort of in the English world I was then I picked up a bottle next to me oh, no. and I was like, it's going to happen. I'm on my own. I'm totally outnumbered. Oh, no. And they came over and they went, Oh, I'm really sorry about earlier. And that was like, oh. that was groundbreaking for me. Cause I was like, what is eight against one? This is <laughs> damn, but yeah, it's, it's weird. You get kind of, um, I mean, everyone sort of becomes a product of their environment, I guess. Now yeah. I wouldn't think anything of it. It's totally bizarre. Did you grow up in uh, rough circumstances? Uh, yeah, I mean, not not rough, rough. I mean, it, to be fair, everywhere in England would be considered rough yeah. in Sweden, pretty much, which is also quite funny, you know, because the rough areas here, I know there's some really rough areas here as well, but even the sort of, you know, the people talk about semi-rough areas here are like suburban suburbs in England because mm-hmm. everywhere is fairly rough. Um But no, I wouldn't say I didn't grow up in in um, in the roughest area. But <laughs> you had to be able to look after yourself, yeah. right? So rough enough, rough for, enough yeah. to get some PTSD and yeah, exactly. crap bottles when exactly. people are coming towards you. <laughs> yeah, shit. Wow, that sound like a psycho. <laughs> Now that I mean, it's totally normal. My English mates were like, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, but yeah. it was crazy. I went back to the UK for a bachelor party about uh, this is about f- ooh, five six years ago. Can't remember mm-hmm. now. And we were in Bournemouth and it's like a very, it's like a party town, basically, um, students, but bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, everybody goes there. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was, I remember standing there being like totally taken aback by the level of aggression and testosterone because I've become almost 
yeah, almost Swedish in, in yeah. my sort of mind sense of, well, you know, just let people get on with it and yeah. don't interfere. Whereas as soon as you get to get back there, you know, I remember bumping into a guy walking past. I went, oh, sorry, mate. And he went, yeah, fucking watch it. I was like, oh, oh yeah. wow, all right, we're here again. So it, it's Where's crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, except now, you know, I'm I'm like, um, I'm tame Andy now. So I was like, oh, Jesus. John got <laughs> better get I better run along. <laughs> Sorry, sir. No, no, it's not not quite. But you, you kind of adapt to your surroundings so quickly. Yeah. And I remember talking to because my mate who's getting married, he's English, but he also lives in Sweden. Mm-hmm. And I remember talking to him when we came back, and I was like, Jesus Christ, everyone there is like aggressive. Yeah. You can feel it in the air as soon as you walk around. I, I guess maybe it was just a bad night, but I yeah. don't know, man. It's uh, it's different. It's probably more likely though to to yeah find aggressive people than, oh, definitely. than around here yeah mm. definitely um so when you were a baby you moved to uh, south africa yes. and you were there until seven eight you said yeah exactly so like 94 95 we left just after south africa won the world cup the rugby world cup like mm. early mandela reign end of apartheid era it what was, uh, what do you remember about those years phew, honestly not a lot I've got like three or four very clear memories. And mm-hmm. one of them is I was a, I was a kid at daycare and, um, my, my daycare was called Pumpum Palace, which is pumpkin palace, which is, nice. you know, I'll never forget that name. I remember climbing up on the, uh, the climbing frame and for some reason it sticks so clearly in my head. I was standing up there with a couple of mates looking over the wall and uh-huh. on the back was a highway and every time we'd police car would drive past, we'd shout, police, police. And that happened far too often for that to be such a clear memory in my head. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was, um, you know, it was, it was, it, that's one of the memories. And then also playing a lot of sports, rugby, cricket, and just being outside all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I have a, and I have some vague memories of school. And I went to, a, then after that, I went to a school called um, Aston Manor. And they still caned kids, you know. So I still, I got, mm. I got, you know, back of the legs with a with a stick Ouch. still. And you know, when I was like seven, eight, nine years old, <laughs> you get a lot. I, not that I remember, but I would say probably more than more than I should more have. Than the other kids. <laughs> no, no, not quite. But like, I was pretty shy as a kid, actually. Oh yeah, yeah, huh, yeah I was imagine. pretty shy. Yeah, exactly. But um, no, it took a while for me to sort of come out my shell. But I think it's because we traveled around so much. My mm-hmm. dad was a pilot, and we lived. <laughs> Like different places all the time and yeah. uh, moved around a lot. So, but South Africa is not a huge amount of memories. I remember when we moved to England and I was asking mum, sort of like, oh, why, why do we move here? It's cold, it's raining. Like, yeah. everyone plays football. I don't know what football is. You know, yeah. I played basically rugby and cricket. Um, and then um, she was like, well, you know, she was pretty honest with us. And she said, the, you know, the, the moment, that you pull up to the gates of where you live and then you have to get out the car to put the code in to open the gates to get back in the car. That was the scariest sort of 30 seconds of her life. Mm. And that was every day. So like the crime, it was, it was pretty brutal. Yeah. We lived in Johannesburg uh, in like in a Kempton park area of Johannesburg. And it's like, you know, it wasn't for me. I didn't know anything about it. I was a yeah, kid, you know, just, you know, everything's normal. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So she was like that, that little time tr- driving up to the gates. Cause we lived in this big old compound with like walls mm-hmm. and barbed wire on the back, uh, on top of the walls and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, for me, that was totally normal. We get to England and it's like, yeah, very different. Everything's open. Yes, man. That's crazy that you got to live in that kind of compound to be, yeah. to be safe. Um, so when you were, when you were seven, eight, you guys moved to England. Yes. And, uh, you, you mentioned it was cold. It was, it was different. Everyone was into football. Yeah. What, what else did you notice about the, the move or what, was the move hard on you? Do you remember? It, that? it definitely was as a kid because mm-hmm. I had a funny accent. I had a very strong South African accent. Oh yeah. 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 It's, it's pretty much gone now. But can you put it on whenever you want? I can. Okay, cool. I'm not going to do it now. We'll though. get to it. Yeah. Maybe. If we had had, if we'd had rum here, like, you you know, the last guest was treated to (laughs) rum. I got water, but, you know, um, but yeah, I, I, I had a strong South African accent. I got to school and everyone was playing football and I was like, why didn't they just pick the ball up? And I was like, (laughs) why can't you tackle this guy? And I, but, um, it was, it was definitely a culture shock. You know, we moved into like a a small town with my mum's mum. We, we lived with her for a long time because my parents moving from South Africa, 
the rand in South Africa was worth like, I don't know, peanuts. You could train it for nothing. It was, it was not valuable currency at all. So mm-hmm. you sell up everything, you move to England and you're like far behind where you would need to be to buy a house. So we lived with my gran for years, um, mm-hmm. in like this very quintessential English village. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I remember, uh, I remember school was tough, uh, for the first years, like junior school like nine through 10, 11, cause I was quite reserved. I was shy. I didn't know anybody. Everyone had grown up there their whole lives together. Yeah. So that wasn't fun. And then we moved, um, to another town. We bought our first house and we lived there. And then that's when I sort of started to figure out who I was a little bit. So mm-hmm. but it was who, a strange journey. And who were you? <laughs> I, yeah, I think the, the same route that most people take, like when you, when you find school tough, you've got two ways, you know, you, you most of the time, you know, you either, you know, get your head down to study or you become the class clown. That's like most <laughs> seems to be uh, from my experience where most people go. And I, I went down the other route. So, nice. um, which was fun. Um, and I, I, I had amazing time through sort of secondary school and stuff. I, I had great friends, you know, it was, it was a breeze. Um, school wasn't super hard for me, but I never tried hard enough to, you know, to be in the top groups, but, um, yeah, it was good fun. And then I fell in love with football. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. What happened? Uh, oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, I could have gone pro if it wasn't for my knee. <laughs> you know? No, no, not quite. Actually, actually, I was actually better at cricket because when I moved from South Africa to England, mm-hmm. I've been playing cricket since I was a child. Yeah. So I was already, I was light years ahead of the kids when I came here. So I was, I was good. Yeah. Um, and I was playing pr- uh, cricket at a good level. I was playing for the county, which is like you know, the highest level you can play at. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I did trials for, for England and stuff like that. Um, actually played, you know, against some players that still play for England oh, cool. um, and are millionaires and have supermodel wives. But mm. I decided that I wasn't going to continue playing cricket because it wasn't cool. Ah. So I started playing football more, um, which I wasn't as good at, but it was more fun. You could have been a pro cricket player. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, we would have never been friends. No, God, no. No, no. I'd be, I'd be on, in, you know, living in a mansion somewhere. I think I've seen one match. Of, I didn't even watch the match, but there was uh, the, I guess, the Cricket World Cup finals. Yeah. While I was studying in Australia, 20, ah. 2011. Okay. And I hung out with a bunch of dudes from India and Sri Lanka. Yes. And uh, I don't even remember. I guess it was India in the finals. I don't I know. No idea. They were very excited. Probably. Yeah, they yeah. were very excited. And I think it was against England or... Okay. So it was like, a, you know, yeah. beating your old oppressors. <laughs> Col- <laughs> colonial <stuff>. rivalry match. <laughs> yes. Yeah. A little bit extra on the um, table there. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Yeah. People were very excited. And I, I don't understand the rules at all, so I, I couldn't follow. No, it's it's wild. I, I don't think many people living in Sweden do understand the rules. It's an it's an odd sport and yeah. there's, there's different formats. and It takes a long time, doesn't yeah, it? Everyone's like, oh, you yeah, play for like three days. Yeah, I mean, sure, sometimes, but some there's different formats. So you okay. play like 2020, which is, that's over in a few hours, you know, so. A few hours. Yeah. How, how many? I mean, depends on how good the other team is. Like, okay. it, it could be wrapped up in an hour and a half, but it could take four hours. You know? So, so ge- generally, a game is three, four hours. Yeah. Or? Yeah, I'd mm. say it's similar to like an American football game. I mean, they they, they take that long. Yeah. They're like what four times ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, but there's commercials yeah, yeah, every ten breaks. seconds. <laughs> but is cricket is is it three four hours of game game time or or also with? It really depends. Breaks. Like it's so it's like how long is a piece of string? Cricket game can can be. It depends. Okay. It really depends. I mean, you could be all out after like you've scored forty runs and. Then it's time to swap over and then the other team will chase that down in like 20 minutes. So it it. depends. Uh, Another sport I discovered in in Australia was Aussie rules football. Oh, it's wild. It is insane. It's wild. I lived in Ireland. I had no idea. Like the the, the athleticism in in that sport. It's crazy. They played, we went to a live game, the Adelaide, oh man, I don't remember the name. Adelaide has a team or two teams even. (laughs) We went to one of their live games and I knew nothing of the sport. They play, I think it's four times 15 minutes Okay. with added stoppage, like, yeah. like in football. And they have, I'm, I'm totally going to mess this up, but I, <laughs> I think they have something like uh, 15 players out and just like three subs. Yeah. And they run 
nonstop. Yes. All the time they like kick up the ball and right. then everyone runs. Not just like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. the the offensive players or whatever. Everyone runs towards the ball. <laughs> everyone jumps to get the ball and everyone tries to, you know, beat down whoever has the ball. Yeah. For, you know, with, with stoppage it's like four times uh 20 25 minutes it's, yeah. it's insane yeah it's crazy it's insane and they they do this for you know hours they love it and yeah i i was very impressed it's it's got to be one of the most challenging sports yeah i lived in ireland for two and a half years and they play gaelic football which is is it the same it's not the same i no irish people would crucify me if i said it was the same <laughs> but it's got is is a similar a similar pattern to the game and it's yeah. the same it's 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 rough Mm-hmm. and the athleticism is insane yeah. and then hurling is another level of crazy have you seen hurling? that hurling no. in ireland oh no. man that is wild so they basically have like like hockey sticks like but not ice hockey like street like yeah hockey hockey sticks mm-hmm. and they got this hard ass ball and they just they just smash it around the park and you're allowed to like chop people's shins with the bat Jesus. and like they tackle each other they smash the ball into each other like it, it is a next level madness. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for everyone that has the courage to play. It's crazy. Hurling. It's crazy. Yeah. With the Aussie rules football, I think their average career is something like two and a half, three years. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I mean, I mean, look at the, look at the Volkanovski. He, I think he played Aussie rules. I could be butchering this, but he decided that it was, it was better to go into the UFC mm. and get your head kicked <laughs> in in a cage than to carry on playing That's, Aussie rules. Well, it, yeah. I yeah. mean, If you're good at it, right. obviously, yeah, because sure. there's money in that. I don't know how much money there is in Aussie rules football, but probably <laughs> you, not enough. I think it was Aussie rules. To, it could to be get, rugby. get your ass whooped for two and a half years and then have, you know. That's wild. No, nah, it's a lot of strength. CT and stuff. I played rugby for many years. Oh, and, did you? Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a tough sport Classic as well. Classic rugby. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Um, and again, yeah, from South Africa and then England, like rugby is big in England as well. Yeah. That's a fun sport. Yeah. Um, but it's tough and everyone looks at it and it's like, oh yeah, it's, that's crazy. How do you play that? But it's that's, actually, that's less, uh, dangerous than the others, right? Because yes. you don't have as many like straight up tackles. Right. And you're, you're not allowed, you, you, you have to tackle someone that's got the ball. So yeah. you're at least prepared yeah. for a hit. Exactly. I actually played yeah, one year. Aussie of, rules is insane. They just, right. it's, they just uh, chop each other down. I don't know whenever. what the rules are there. I can't <laughs> figure it out. Yeah. I played one year of, of American football as well. Okay. And that shit was crazy. Yeah. Because I went into that thinking, you know, I played rugby and I'm, 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 yeah, you know, I'm, I'm right. I can guy. handle myself. I'm a big guy. And then, um, shit, I got my bell rung on like the first uh, training. Cause, it, cause what I didn't really mentally <laughs> understand or prepare for is that you can get hit whenever. Like yeah. you don't have to have the ball. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming from a rugby mindset. So I just remember I was playing like tight end or wide receiver or something and I was doing running a route and the ball went to the other side of the field and this guy just fucking boom, just absolutely leveled me from nowhere. So I remember up. looking up and just be like, what the just happened man I, yeah. i was i was just watching the other play so yeah i wasn't very good at that um <laughs> that is so dangerous like when you're, when you're looking somewhere else you yeah. see those tackles i mean I, I, i'm not a fan so i don't understand right. the sport but I love it. with an outsider's perspective it's like this should not be allowed like why why are we doing this <laughs> it's crazy it's just insane it's yeah. crazy it's good i like I, actually i like the sport i like yeah. i think actually i got in to basketball almost through American football because hmm, I started watching and enjoying American football from a young age and then yeah just stumbled upon basketball because hmm. I played in the UK for a bit um basketball a, yeah but only yeah. as a only like school and you, you don't have the same system here like we have you play a lot of sports in school uh, in the UK but you have a school team so every sport has a school team and then you have a district team and stuff like that and then you have club teams on top of that so I played for the school basketball team the problem was is that we were well we weren't playing at a very high level mm-hmm. and we had two guys on our team that were playing for like the England youth team mm-hmm. so literally it was just I'll get the ball to Nick and Alex and everyone else right. just just you know, get, out, just the get way. out of the way yeah. so my basketball skills today are exactly the same as they were in school <laughs> like oh rebound yeah I can do yeah, that you're pass at, absolutely you're Shoot. great at getting out of the way I'm brilliant <laughs> I can set a screen um yeah I can pass but yeah don't don't get me to shoot man you're, you're pretty tall though how tall are you 
uh like uh, swedish numbers right uh, 190 ish round about there 190 like six six foot four what, what? six foot four in uh, british numbers yeah exactly got it much better is that yeah. is that the same as the american system yeah exactly okay so cool. i'd be like a short point guard in america yeah but here i can like I, if i play pickup here i'm like one of the tallest yeah, people yeah so. yeah now my teams were always i think you would have been the tallest <laughs> right on pretty much all the teams i play with growing yeah. up yeah yeah we were always we, we were always the team that when we get to a game we look at the other team like damn how are we gonna rebound guys how are we gonna do this <laughs> every team every team See? we play we look yeah. at them like damn that's where you're gonna call me up We're be like Andy. To struggle. <laughs> yeah come in and just get the ball and don't shoot yeah, Ivan uh, make basket. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, you were in South Africa until seven eight, and then moved to England. And uh, when did you get to Sweden? Yeah, so Sweden. So I had a bit of a history, or sort of like a relationship with Sweden before I moved here. So I went to school with this guy mm-hmm. who's still like one of if, you know, my best friends today, um, and he was half American, half Swedish. He moved to the UK the same. So he, he moved to the, this town in the UK when we moved there as well. Okay. So, yeah, from like age of, I think it was like 11, 12, around right about there. And uh, we started on the same day and everyone thought that we were brothers. We looked fairly similar. We both had funny accents, mm-hmm. except this was American, mine was South African, but you know, <laughs> English people, you know, yeah. they, they hadn't left the island in, in years. So they, they were like, oh, they must be brothers. And we were like, yeah, I guess so. And then we became friends because nice. we were like, okay, cool. So Why his not? name's Carl and, and, uh, he, he then, we lived in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we became great buddies and, um, he moved to Sweden. I was absolutely devastated. I think it was like mm-hmm. 16 years old. And I remember him moving to Sweden and then he said, Oh, you know, just come and visit me. I'm like, yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> Why would I want to go to Sweden? Yeah. You know, but, but, um, when he left, like uh, about six months later, I decided, um, you know, I'm going to go out and sort of surprise him. So I sort of spoke nice. to his parents and I flew over there and I came over and surprised him and it was great fun. And then we were at his like summer house, which I didn't realize was a thing, by the way, like yeah. that's a, that's a secret you've kept from the world. Why does everyone have summer houses? Anyway, that's another story. But yeah, it was beautiful right on the lake. And I was like, damn, Sweden's actually legit. This is in the yeah. summer. So yeah. again, a little bit of a... Good move. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was great fun. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to keep coming back. And as a 16-year-old boy, I mean, you definitely have other interests that mm. bring you to Sweden. What could that be? I have no idea. Ah, cool. No, no, no idea. Not All sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Literally every guy I know here that is not from Sweden yeah. is here for yeah. the same reason they met a girl and 100%. that's it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a whole different conversation, yeah. but 16 year old Andy was, was very excited to come to Sweden yeah. then after that. So then I came like every year just to visit him and, um, um, yeah, live my life. Same time I moved to Ireland. I, you know, I left home and started working, moved around a bit, did a few different things. And mm. then, um, I ended up coming to Sweden because <laughs> I met a girl in Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was, oh God, let me get this numbers right now. I think I was 21 and mm-hmm. I'd just broken up with my ex-girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And the whole reason we broke up was was pretty much, yeah, we kind of, yeah, we, it was, it was going to happen. But I also wanted to be single. I'd been in a relationship for years and I was like, okay, now's my time. Yeah. 21-year-old, you know. I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to move around. I'm going to have fun. Yeah. So that sort of the next day I booked a flight to Sweden. Nice. Flew out to visit my friend Carl. Um, we went to a crayfish party, but mm-hmm. nobody there ate crayfish. So it was a chicken wing party, which mm. is much better. Definitely. Um, and then we got, we were drinking snaps and we were having a good time. And then we got on the train at Hudinger, the penal dog. Yeah. And got on the train, me, uh, Carl, to, uh, an English mate of mine, and a couple of his mates. They were all Chelsea fans, and I'm an Arsenal fan. Um, and we're talking about football on the train, and they were kind of ganging up on me. So I was looking around, like, okay, I need some backup. So yeah. I saw this girl reading a book. And I was like, oh, she looks is... like an Arsenal fan. Well, I mean, I said the most <laughs> cringy thing to her. Like the first words I ever said to my wife were, "You support Arsenal, don't you, love?" Nice. That's awful. 
But it, it she turned, it, well, I mean, she, <laughs> she, she turned around and she went, actually, yeah, I do. And I was like, whoa, okay, this is wild. So you found out she had been skipping her medicine for a week? Or? <laughs> no, no, I found out she had, a, she had an ex-boyfriend who was English, so it was an Arsenal fan, so that's oh, why. No yeah. way. <laughs> but, but at the time, I was like, oh, my God, what? You actually support Arsenal? So she was reading a book. She was actually going from work back home. Mm. Um, and she lived with her cousin and she was going back into the city and we were going out, out. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I managed to convince her to come out for a drink with us like straight away. So I went and sat with her and started talking to her and, you know, convinced her to come and join these drunk English people at a bar, um, at sort of eight o'clock in the afternoon or evening. And, um, yeah, we started talking, we had a great time and I thought, brilliant. You know, again, this is English Andy. So he was like, she's come from the train to the bar. Yeah. We've been talking all night. We've had good banter. I'm a hundred percent in here. It's a lock. It's a lock. 1130. She goes, all right, I'm going to go home now. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, sorry, what? What did I do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And she's like, yeah, no, I'm going to go home now. I was like, okay. And she was like, I said, oh, can I have your number? She said, oh, give me yours. I'll, I'll text you. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. old chestnut. Yeah. All right. So I gave her my number and yeah, that was it. I thought, okay, I'm never going to see this person again. Yeah. I thought I was on fire. I generally, I thought I brought my A game to that conversation <laughs> and everything. I was so certain. But yeah, then she left. Um, a couple of days later, she texted me and said, do I want to go for a coffee? I'm like, hmm. what? Okay. Again, in England, that doesn't happen. Like you don't yeah. go for coffee. <laughs> you go to the pub. Or, yeah. So I was, yeah, sure. I don't drink coffee even. I was like, yeah, I'll come for a hot chocolate. Um, so we sat down, we had a coffee. I had a hot chocolate with cream nice. and marshmallows like a child. Oh, very masculine. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was, you know, putting out all the stops. <laughs> and then we started talking and again, got along really well. Um, and yeah, so goodbye. And she left and I left and I was like, okay, this is weird. Like, yeah, uh, I I'm not really sure what's happening. And then we met up a third time before I left. Um, and she actually, and then we had a few drinks and, and, and again, it was great. It was lovely. Um, nice. and then said goodbye. And I was like, okay, again, I'm never going to see this person again, probably. Yeah. Um, and then three months later, she moved to England, moved in with my parents and me. <laughs> cause oh. I was back at my parents' place. Cause I, I, I left Ireland cause my ex was in Ireland. Yeah. We worked together. That was a bit. Um, and then, um, yeah, so I, I, I moved back to England. Um, she then moved to England. Wow. And we were together since then. We've been together 13 years. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, crazy well, story. Well done. I think I'm the only person I know that's met their wife on the panel talk. Yeah, that's probably the most successful drunk <laughs> Pendle talk, <laughs> flirting attempt I mean, it's in about history. A, it's about as good as it gets, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's completely un <laughs> unfathomable. <laughs> Especially, and I didn't realize how wild it was at the time that yeah. I spoke to a random person on yeah, the train, exactly. and they responded. Uh, and you bring them along with your right, you know, group of male I mean, who, friends, who does drunk that? football. <laughs> Who does that? No, Crazy. But, uh, she's awesome. But um, yeah, so it's uh, it's only now sort of dawning as how I must have been I must have been the most charming person on the planet. Totally. I don't know totally. how, but this it, is this is a bit concerning because this is going to be posted on the internet. Yeah, you're going to inspire so many drunk oh, idiots. Yes, do it. They're going to do it. <laughs> do it. They're going to be like Andy did it. I can do right. it. Right. I mean, but this is the thing, like I, okay. So as I've been in a relationship a long time, I don't have any experience with Tinder or any of these dating apps or anything like that. I know yeah. you and I talked about that, yeah. you know, and, and as a, as a, as a married couple, me and me, me and my wife sit there sometimes we're like, oh, who do you reckon would, you know, get most swipes? Cause we mm. don't know anything about oh, this world. She would. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a I've very never, short conversation. I've never met yeah. her. I know nothing. It's just it's that's the way the world works. Yeah. But I, it, it's just so bizarre that, that this this world exists because it's so alien to me. Mm -hmm. And I just like yeah. There's one thing I can inspire people to do with this podcast. No, I'm joking. But it, <laughs> um, but please like talk to people. Like human interaction is the most beautiful thing yes, ever. I agree. And that's why when you said oh yeah you're going to start a podcast yeah. And I was like, oh, what's it about? Well, just talking to people. I mean, it's so obvious, but it's, yeah, it's, I mean, 
nothing compares to actually just having a good conversation with someone. I agree. Especially face to face. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, yeah, digital has its, you know, benefits as well, mm -hmm. but that kind of, I, I, let's say heaven forbid something was to happen with me and Amanda, I would not be on Tinder or any of that stuff. It mm -hmm. would be, I would then, I would talk to people. You would get drunk on the Pendel tour. Right. <laughs> Obviously. And I would scare the shit out of everyone. And I would people die alone. Arsenal you know? fans. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, but no, no, I no gotta... but, I, but I just, yeah, I just, I just don't understand um, the other way of dating which is bizarre because I'm not that old. I yeah. sound super old now, but yeah, it just it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. It's like sliding into DMs. What, what, what is that? Uh, do I don't know. Do I don't that? know. I, 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 I'll say this much. I, um, once I learned how Tinder works, yeah. I appreciated it. Uh -huh. Yeah. I read this, uh, last time I was single was about a little more than a year and a half ago. Yeah. And about two years ago, where while I was single, a friend told me like, oh, you, you're just like using your same Tinder account that you use forever and just swiping. I'm like, yeah. He's like, no, dude, you have, you have to like read this guide. And he sent me this guide of how it works. <laughs> what? Yeah. I had no idea, but <laughs> it is once you, once you hear it, it makes sense. <laughs> but if you just have never thought about it, you're just like, you know, I swipe, they swipe. We see right. if we match, that's it. No, <laughs> the, the whole game is like, uh, women are, there's fewer women. Obviously this is all about straight Tinder. Yeah. Uh, gay Tinder is different, but, yeah. but straight Tinder is, there's way uh, fewer women than men. And Tinder knows this, the company, they mm -hmm. know this. So their main job is to keep attractive women satisfied. <sighs> That's the only thing, what? that's the only thing they need to care about because as long as they're, and I don't mean like attractive as in beautiful, obviously yeah. that's part of it because, you know, people sure. are people, it's Tinder. You look at pictures, you right. swipe on pictures. Uh, I mean, attractive as in a lot of people are swiping yes on them. Uh -huh. That's, that's what I mean by attractive. So Tinder is only like the only group they care about is attractive females. So it sounds like a VIP area of a nightclub. Kind of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if they are happy and, and they keep coming back to the platform, men will come. Jeez. Because, you know, we're idiots. You can treat us like shit. Uh, yeah. As long as there's females there, we're going to be there. So It's crazy you know, how the male mind works. And uh, so their only job is to, to keep those uh, attractive females um, happy and, and returning uh, back to the platform. And how, what makes them happy is fun interactions on Tinder. Okay. So the entire algorithm, algorithm is set up. It gives you a ranking, a secret ranking that you can what? never find out about. What? Yeah. It gives you a ranking and that ranking is based on, of course, how many, what is it? Left swipes you get? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Swipes. Uh, and, um, how many of your interactions people answer to like yeah. when you match with someone are you interesting you know uh -huh. if you just say hi and the person never responds your rating goes, goes down this is wild but if you say something interesting and a conversation starts your ranking goes up and when your ranking goes up you're shown to more of the attractive females if your ranking is down you're not even presented to them so you can see them. You can you you can be swiping every day like crazy, but they don't see you. You're oh. invisible, so you're never gonna match. You know. This is bizarre. See, yeah. this, this is a world I just don't understand. It is crazy. I I had no idea about this two years ago, and then I read this thing, and then I went in a rabbit hole. I'm like, wow, this is so interesting. Like, because they Tinder is like the one of the top five apps in all countries. It's in active in yeah. pretty much. I'm exaggerating, but it's probably in the top ten. In, yeah. In, and they have this power, like they can match people or, you know, choose not to match people based on how they, they shape their alg algorithm. So did you meet your fiance on Tinder? No, no, I did not. Oh, damn. It's uh, the same. No, but I've had like longer proper relationships yeah. with people I've met on Tinder and, and so many in Sweden have. It's a very good app for Sweden, obviously, because we're a little bit, 
there's a lot of single scared, people scared here of as well. uh, a social interaction that's true yeah. that's true so it's, yeah. it's a really good app in sweden yeah. but anyway once you understand like how the algorithm works and what you need to do to like boost your ranking <laughs> It's a completely different game. <laughs> Shit, so this is like Black Mirror, but for dating. I mean, it has to work this way. Like, what's the alternative? And that's going to happen. Because if you, you have, if you have like 80% men, 20% women, right. it's an issue. So you're going to have to select from that pool of men <laughs> those that are most interesting for your, you know, key, key okay. demo. Oh, and makes yeah, sense. Exactly. That's what I said at the beginning. Like, when once you hear it, you're like, yeah. So basically, the motto of the story is it's way easier to go and talk to a girl on the train than it is to I be know. successful on Tinder. I, I mean, know. come on. That's. It could be. Ah, definitely. But, but here's the thing, though. Like the train or or even, say, a club where, where right. those people are for, out for that reason, yeah. there is so much randomness built into it. Yeah. You true. know, you have to, if you see someone you find interesting, uh, you have to be on your A game. You have to be, you know, not too in, drunk, not too sober. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> all that stuff. Uh, they have to be, you know, yeah. single. Yeah. They have to be interested. They have to be uh, having a good day. Like yeah. they could, they could just had some, you know, shit happen to them yeah, that true. makes them completely uh, um, unav- unavailable. Yeah. yeah. So th- there's a lot of randomness mm-hmm. built into it. So uh, Tinder just gives you the opportunity to say hi to more people mm. that are already on tinder so they're already dating yeah true uh oh, so, it's, so it's just it's just a qu- quicker way to to get more interaction and then obviously you have to meet up and it's all about the social connection but yeah. but it's just a way to say hi yeah that's that's how i i viewed it last time i was using it nice well yeah. if anything ever happens i'll be sure to ask for help on my first <laughs> tinder account guide, yeah, yeah, guide. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. and if my wife's listening don't worry baby it's fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> no it's definitely not for me that's not um, a, that's not a world for me no it's i it's, like uh, i like i like talking to people i like oh absolutely just you know having conversations and it's, it's weird because some people find it scary. For me, it's just interesting. Yeah. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? But that's interesting because the the younger generations yeah. are so text oriented because yeah. social media. They, they've grown mm. up with social mm. media and probably Tinder and that kind of stuff as well. So I've I've heard that a lot of people are um, they have anxiety about even speaking on the phone to someone. Mm, yeah, because they're that. so used to to texting. Yeah. So if you would just talk to someone on the phone, your first interaction, they get lost. They don't know how to do it. Yeah. Um, we're from a different generation. We're, so we're probably yeah. one of the last generations that, you know, we just missed that. Right. Because uh, we're, we're, we're the same age, right? We're the same age, yeah. So you grew up with, with like... I remember like MSN Messenger and dial oh, up yeah. internet. And yeah. I remember so many times where I'm sitting in the computer room yeah. because you had to have a computer room because yeah. the computer was so fucking big. You couldn't, you couldn't carry it around. Yeah. So we, we sit in the computer room and I was like dialing up to the internet, you know, that's still <laughs> in my head. And then like after five minutes, I hear my dad downstairs, Andrew, turn the fucking computer off. I'm trying to accept phone calls because you can't get phone calls. Like when yeah. you're on the internet, yeah. so he's like, work my call. You need to get off. I'm like, but dad, I'm talking to a girl, a messenger. Oh man. He's like, I don't care. You know, so yeah. um, that, you know, it was such a small period where you could interact digitally. Yeah. It just became, it was just too complicated most of the time. So I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to knock on their door and we'll just yeah. go have a walk. And it's just, it's a totally different age. And I kind of feel, because I have kids, I feel I definitely, definitely have that kind of conversation on a regular basis where what's it going to be like for them? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're six and eight. Mm-hmm. So 10 years time, think about how different the world was 10 years ago, even. Yeah. And it's just speeding up. Yeah. I mean, what are they going to have to do? Like, I'm not going to be, they're going to be like, dad, how do I do this? I'm I have no idea. It's, it's technology is moving at a rate that it we is. just can't fathom. So it is, especially the AI. Yeah. Oh. Man, the AI stuff is super interesting now. Yeah. I, see, I'm kind of like, I'm in two minds. Yeah. One, I like it because it's, you can do so much great stuff. Mm-hmm. And the other one is like, but, but I like things how they used to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you definitely have that. Um, I'm split between two ways. I mean, it's obviously going to be great for so many things, but it's going to be detrimental as well. Surely. Of course. I just heard this thing that like 
people who do voiceover work, mm, yeah, they're they're just not needed. Like right. if if you recorded one book or one one movie as right. a voiceover actor, that's it. Now they have your voice, and and I, I heard this in a podcast. Like if you're doing that kind of work, mm. you need to be careful about the contract you sign mm. and make sure that that is not in the contract that they can just uh, use your voice and likeness mm. uh, yeah. with AI because it makes so much sense <clears throat> not just from like a you know making money yeah capitalist move it makes sense which it really does but it also makes sense from a practicality point of view like yeah. you know why why have someone a human being sit down for I don't know, 15 hours yeah, exactly. or whatever to, to read a book it's out loud. It's not cheap either. Yeah. It's not cheap and it's, it's, you know, I'm sure people who do that kind of work enjoy it and, and all yeah, that stuff. I've but done it's, that work. Yeah. It's, but it's great. It, yeah. But it's like, it, 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 from a technical point of view, mm -hmm. from a, from a development point of view, it doesn't make sense. Right. Like we, we can do that more efficient. You can have an AI, you can, from, from just a podcast I've done. Right. You can use my voice. Don't do this, but you could, you could, you could use my voice. I do not consent. I do not consent. You do not have my consent, but, but you could use my voice to, to, you know, churn out, uh, thousands of, yeah. of, uh, books, like, right. uh, audio books yeah. in a day. But a question then with your profession, Copyrated? copywriting. Yeah. I'm not worried. You're not worried? I'm not. Interesting. Good. I mean, I agree. You shouldn't. I mean, because yeah. there's always going to need a human touch. But, well, actually, I don't know. Is it? Let me flip that. It's, it's, here's the thing, though. My, um, why I'm not concerned is um, when people need copywriting, th this might all change. I might be, you know, talking out of my ass and everything's going to change in two years and I'm, I'm going to be wrong. But my, my um, impression right now is, when people want, uh, when people need copywriting, mm. uh, they come to me and they have this idea. They have a, an idea for, I don't know, a brand, a product, whatever, but they don't know what the right words are. Yeah. They don't, they don't know. That's why they're coming to me. Right. Like if they could do this on their own, they wouldn't hire me. Yeah. Those same people are probably not going to be comfortable you know, just putting a prompt into an mm -hmm. AI and mm -hmm. then reading through it and, and understanding, is this the good, right, is, is yeah. this right or not? That's what, where you need the expertise. So right. the tone of voice and stuff. Yeah. yeah. However, if, if a copywriter can utilize, right. you know, chat GPT or yes. whatever, yeah. then great, you know, put a prompt. If, if I get really good at prompts uh, yeah. and just do that. And, uh, save you a lot of time. And, you can actually get more clients. Yeah. But I, I don't, I don't know because there's so much like when I have uh, clients, we, we sit like this and we talk and they, they want this text and, uh, um, I write something and then they look at it and they're like, I don't know. I think we want to make it yeah. more quirky. Right. And if you just put, make it more quirky in an AI, Maybe it works. I don't know. Dude, I've done this recently. I, cause I, as you know, I'm, I'm also starting a podcast cause well, yeah. you know, I'm a straight white male. I have to have my own <laughs> podcast, right? It's like the thing I've got a beard as well. So it's, it's, I mean, it's, I've got the whole set, yeah. but yeah, so I'm also starting a podcast surprise. And, um, I was trying to write the sort of the blurb for what it's about and yeah. trying to come up with names. So I was using chat, um, mm -hmm. AI as well. And, I mean, I sat, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I sat for about three hours and I was, it was just getting worse and worse and worse mm, for me. Cause I yeah. was trying to, I mean, maybe I'm using the wrong prompts, but I was like, okay, yeah, do that, but not with this. And, uh, don't use that tone. Yeah. And, uh, those words and it take out, cause it was saying like, I was doing a football podcast and they're using the word soccer in it. And mm. I'm like, oh God, it's like <laughs> blasphemy. So, um, yeah, it took me ages and I eventually, it, what it did though, is it generated enough ideas so that yeah. I was able to then formulate what I wanted to do. Yeah. So, but it takes a lot of patience. And that's, that's how it can be utilized mm. as a tool. Yeah. But, but here's, here's, that's exactly to my point. Like if you were sitting with me, mm. I have a sense of who you are as a human being, Yeah, you know, yeah. and that's with all my clients. Like we start with a conversation face to face, right. usually sometimes over the internet, but I get a sense of who they are as a human being. Mm. So when you say make it more quirky, I know what that means. Yeah. As opposed to someone else saying, 
you know, make it more quirky. They they mean something else. You know? right. So you gotta you gotta have the human touch to. I don't know. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I, maybe I'll be out of a job. Luckily, I have this podcast, so that's my <laughs> that's my fallback plan. <laughs> right. I'm just gonna keep doing this and just stop making money because right. <laughs> because AI will take care right. of it. I mean, the thing is, but then I mean. <sighs> You just got to survive until we get to the point where AI does everything and everyone just gets like a universal salary because surely that's got to be, that's yeah. not too dystopian. That's got to come at some point. It's not. I, I Maybe not in our lifetime. I don't, uh, no, I mean, I'm sure it can happen in our lifetime that there's some form of UBI. Yeah. It's just, I don't think that's a solution because no. people will get restless. People will get, yeah. you know, feel useless. Yeah, you you got to do something. And hopefully, if we're smart enough, we can utilize AI and, and, right. and you know, all the automated stuff so that we can do more creative work, you know, more uh, uh, caring work, the, the, the stuff that yeah. needs a human touch where, yeah. where you don't yeah. want a computer doing it. Hopefully, we can order our society in such a way that we can do more of the human stuff and let, you know, computers do whatever the inhuman stuff is and yeah. live, live better lives. Cause there's obviously now a rise of the four day work week. I saw that mm -hmm. Sandquist just did that in the bag company. Four days. That's four so, day work that's, week. that's so much. So they work four days. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah you're, I, you're freelance. That's <laughs> four days. Why, what? why so much? Now? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm here. Who's been in the corporate world for a while. It's like four days. Oh my God. I'm kidding. I, I work more than four days. Every, he, he, every doesn't, now and day. he doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely doesn't. But like the four day work week, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. that's becoming, and, and, you know, they've done studies that show that profits are up, burnout is down, staff yeah. turnover is down. It makes sense because oh, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, whoever, like, whatever Americans started the nine to five, Monday to Friday. Yeah. Well, that was designed because men went to work and women stayed at home. It was, it was a complete yeah. segregation in terms of the, the, the labor, it was, I, I, I could be totally wrong on this, but I seem to remember it being Henry Ford who started the Monday to Friday, nine to five. Could be. Factory because it was, and that was because it was, um, yeah, 40 hours a week was needed to get the work done. That was then, but this is mm -hmm. what, I don't know, 80 plus years ago. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's not the case anymore. Like the, it doesn't make sense now, yeah. you know, um, it's uh, me and my wife both work. We have two kids. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge amount of work. I mean, it's a full time job just being a parent. Yeah. But now between two of you, you've got three full time jobs and, you know, salaries don't get you what they used to get you. Yeah. So two people have to work. You have to push harder. There's more competition. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to climb the ladder and earn more and buy more. And, you know, that, that all, yeah. um, uh, sort of bad cycle, um, and it's 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 different because kids are suffering because of it, um, mm -hmm. because they don't get as much time with their parents. You know, I was I had a job not so long ago where I would wake up in the morning, I would check my emails, I would then get my kids ready, take them to school and daycare, leave them there, go back work, um, and work all day. Um, around 4.30, go and pick them up. They were the last ones at daycare, mm -hmm. um, even at 4.30, 5 o'clock. And then I'd go back home and then the U.S. would come online and then I'd work in the evening. And, you know, I as many times where I've been sitting there, uh, you know, after dinner and they're like, oh, dad, can we play a game? And I'm like, oh, sorry, you know, I've got a meeting, yeah. I can't. And, you know, and then you work and then you say goodnight and then you keep working and then you watch TV for an hour and then you pass out on the sofa and then you just repeat because – the expectations for work are totally different. You know, not many people finish work at the time they're supposed to finish work on. Yeah. So four days, I mean, massive props to companies that are trying it and mm -hmm. that the, the, the research shows that it's actually the right way to move. Yeah. Think of what you could do with an extra day uh, as a, I mean, yeah, maybe you, <laughs> maybe you can't <laughs> fathom this as a freelance non parent, but <laughs> geez, if I could have an extra day to like, clean yeah. the house yeah. uh, i prep for stuff actually have some time alone yeah. my god that'd be amazing you can start a podcast exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> no you're you're absolutely right i think the trick is though it has to be it, it can't be just one company doing it no because if you have 
depends on your business. Like my, my business, I, I, I'm a, I have a one man company. Right. I can do, I can like, like structure my, my work so that I work four days and, yeah. and, and whatever. And that's, that's it. But if you're in a competitive business, if you're like in a, in, I don't know, like or service industry, I mean, yeah, sir. Yeah. That's even, even harder, but, but any, any kind of like competitive business, uh, with stocks, stock owners mm -hmm. and, and, and that kind of stuff. Like if one company says we're going to do it four days, yeah. you know, their competition is not right. Then their competition is going to win and win shares and, yeah. and, and that's going to scare away yeah. stock owners and all that. The, the capitalistic system is kind of, a. It's not built for less work, right? <laughs> because the, the, we we've had so many technology breakthroughs. Like yeah. we didn't have computers. Yeah, you know, thirty thirty years ago, we didn't have computers at every office. Everyone became so much more efficient. Like with, with one computer, a, a person can do the work of you know five people in the past. So we didn't we didn't start working five times less. We just became five times as as efficient. efficient. The yeah. flip side to this is that also, if you think about, you know, the new generation entering the workforce, mm -hmm. the expectations are totally different, like from their side yeah. and companies are going to have to adjust to that to be able to yeah. have staff to hire them. Yeah. And, you know, companies that move to a four day work week are going to then have a better chance of attracting, attracting top talent mm -hmm. who are more efficient. Also, studies show it's more efficient to work on a four-day work week. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I agree, I agree. Like capitalism will always have a say in it, but I do think it's at least a move in the right direction. Because I mean, the nine yeah. to five, Monday to Friday, that's so dead. Yeah, I mean, that's not possible anymore when both parents need to work to afford like food. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it works if one parent can work like, geez, if, if I could be a stay at home dad, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah sign me up. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, uh, you know, yeah. and that's not because I think it's an easy job. It's just more fun than working. Yeah. Like yeah. I would pay me to be home with my kids. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's another wild thing with Sweden that the, the parents will leave. It's good. It's amazing. Yeah. In England, I'd get like four days if I'm lucky and they'd probably take that out my holiday. Yeah. Whereas here it's like, well, I can be off for nine months. Man, you hear such horror stories from the US where people, yeah. women give birth and they're at work the next day. It Otherwise is. they'll lose their jobs. It's like, so oh, weird. Man. It's so crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy. I've had so the same. It's, it's mad. And yeah. I remember that period so well. Like I was, I was off with my daughter for seven months mm -hmm. um, and I was with my f son for, I think, four months because he started daycare earlier. Um but yeah, it was, it was, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, and also it gives the father who's had a fairly easy ride up until that point, a little bit of perspective Yeah, <laughs> because it's a, it's an eye opener. Yeah. I remember like when we had our first kid and I mean, it was tough. She had colic, she cried all the time. Um, and then I'd go to work and I'd be able to escape that. You yeah. Know? And then I'd mm. work and I'd come home and I'd be like, oh, I'm tired from work. My wife's like, mm, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm tired from <laughs> worse stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then when you were off, um, with the kid and there's the roles reverse, my wife's like, see you later. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> it really gives you the perspective that you need. Cause I mean, shit as guys, we get the easy ride. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I think equality in Sweden is yeah, still probably not where it needs to be, but it's way better than other countries. Like For it's sure. not even close sure. compared to England and UK, uh, US and stuff. It's not even close. And I think this is one of the key things to, to really de encourage that, you know, mm -hmm. and to, I mean, to every person that's having a kid, every guy, especially take the time, yeah. like it's the best thing you'll ever do. Uh, mm -hmm. it really changes the way you think about things. Do you think that's a little bit of a like a a, a luxury belief? Yeah, because not everyone exactly can afford 100%. to do that. Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. That's a. I mean, exactly. It's it's spot on. It's a luxury. Um, you know, we yeah we were obviously in a good position because we had both had decent jobs, so it kind yeah. of works. Yeah. But those months are hard as well. Of course, of course. <laughs> because yeah, that even you know even though we were in decent professions, as soon as you well, I was at the time, my wife was, um, studying for a second kid. Um, mm -hmm. so we had, um, you know, a student salary or a student yeah. loan and then parental leave loan. And the, those yeah. months were tough, but it's definitely a luxury because it's, but it's also, I mean, a luxury. Yeah. But 
I don't know how to say it. You you kind of have to. You only get that opportunity once, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult. I mean, I'm sitting in a very privileged position, so it's kind of hard for me to no, comment. No, everyone's situation in life, in, in life is different, but if, yeah. you, if you can, you if should. If you can do it, you should that's do the it. Point. There you go. That's what yeah. I, that's what I meant to so. say. <laughs> <laughs> My God, you should do like copywriting or something. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Yeah. Um, how did uh, having kids change you? Whoa, good question. I, um, I think th there's one super tangible change and that is my level of patience it's it's much better uh, i was super impatient before um i would you know i'd be um yeah i both work or just in normal life i want things to happen there and then straight away but with a kid you kind of have to learn to just accept the situation you're in and just be patient so i think patience is is key that's where i've had the most growth um and then i think the other side is your values change massively in terms of not your core values but what you've what you want to do with your time and mm -hmm. what actually means something to you before kids i i would sit there on a saturday and like hung over and kind of like frustrated that I didn't have any fun plans that weekend. Yeah. Uh, and that would like ruin my weekend. Um, or even when you were in a relationship. Yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely mm. me and Amanda would sit there and, and she's like, again, she's pretty chill. I like things happening all the time. Mm. So, um, I'd be sitting there and frustrated and nothing to do and all this stuff. Mm. And I want to have fun. I want to do this. I want to go out. Now you're like, if no, I had like, an extra day off, I could do so much cleaning. Right. Oh, wow. I said that, didn't I? You did. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, that, there you yeah, go. That's, that's, that's the change. That's the change. That's the change right there. No, but you value different things. Like you value just time yeah. um, and you appreciate, you know, small things. Like I walk my kids to school every day and mm -hmm. it's so much fun because mm -hmm. every day, something happens that makes you smile or they do something silly or they, you know, they laugh or they say something that, you know, and you couldn't pay me to walk anywhere before I had kids. Now I think it's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, it's different. Your values change totally. Um, but it's, it's, it's one of these things, you know, you, every new parent speaks to someone before and I go, oh, have you got any tips? Uh, you know, all these kind of things. There are no tips. You just have to kind of figure it out as you go along. Yeah. You will never be prepared for it. Um, something people tell you to do won't work for your kid or your family or your situation. So you can never prepare for it. So there's never a good time to have kids. Um, but it, it, it's a journey. <laughs> it's a journey. Um, it changes, it changes the way you think about a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Don't get me wrong. There's been times where I've been sitting there with a screaming baby going, Oh my God, what did I do? Yeah. But, um, it's you know that that disappears 10 seconds later because they look at you and then you're like yeah. oh so it's a it's a it's a journey definitely a journey nice i wanted to uh, yeah there was something we were talking about with the with the ai yes um my my i don't know if i told you this my podcast logo mm. i made oh, it yeah you did i made AI. it with um what's it called dolly the, okay the yeah. ai and to me, that's that that's very interesting because I made it. I prompted the AI to create the art. Yeah. But I'm I can't design for shit. So, you know, I, I didn't make it, <laughs> right. but but it wouldn't have happened without my input. Yep. And that to me is it's such an interesting development. Like where who owns that material or or you know, who created that material? I can't it, it's going to be so weird. Yeah. Once AI gets good, it's already good enough to, to right. cause problems, but you know, yeah. yeah so, I, so I had, um, I, I also tried to create the logo for podcast with AI mm -hmm. and then I have a friend who's a graphic designer and I was like, Hey, you know, I, I, I used this program and I got these, what do you think? And his, he had one word reply or two words was like, it's shit. <laughs> and then two seconds later he was like call me so, <laughs> so i called him and he he did one that was much better nice <laughs> so nice. so ai is good it's not quite there yet i think yeah now it's it, i mean it depends on what you want to do and and what your 
uh, expectations are, I guess. Yeah. But um, designers are not going to be out of work anytime yet either. No. No. Uh, it's just an interesting point, like you know, especially when you can train it on, like like what the what do you have now? Do you make art in the style of? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's cool. I don't know, yeah. in the style of Pablo Picasso or whatever, yeah. and it makes it. Yeah, and it's new paintings with Picasso style, and it's like right. it, it's such a tricky situation. Like, should if if Picasso was alive, should he get royalties? <laughs> Because the AI clearly, Shit, you know, yeah. gets trained on right. on his work that he put, you know, his whole life into. But it's new art created by someone else who just prompted an AI. It's it's gonna be a weird, messy situation. Yeah, yeah. We we talked about this, right? If someone took like Miley Cyrus, her work, and, and just started making AI music with yeah. Miley Cyrus's voice and style, and makes you know a thousand new albums in a month <laughs> i just heard and just this. floods spotify with right. it what 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 is that like no. how do you deal with that i just hope there's someone much smarter than me sitting there trying to figure this out at the moment because yeah. this is this is above my pay grade oh you think so no i think i think people want to hear your thoughts on this, well, this you know, how, how expert, would you resolve this <laughs> <laughs> does miley cyrus get a cut or what do you say Andy? <laughs> No comment. No comment. <laughs> so you're anti Miley? Is that what you're saying? Uh, don't you don't, I love you Miley Cyrus. She's cut her awesome. Out, so nah, she's she's oh, awesome. She is. She is. I uh, definitely, I definitely appreciate you know guilty pleasure. She's great. <laughs> My daughter actually likes Miley Cyrus now, so now I have an excuse to listen to her. Mm, so nice. Going nice. around singing about buying myself flowers. <laughs> Your daughter put some music on. You know all the words already. Hundred <laughs> percent. I've got moves and everything. <laughs> nice. Uh, you mentioned a podcast. Do you want to tell me, uh, t tell the world what the podcast is about? I'm not sure. I'm mm. not sure. All I'm right. not sure the world's ready for it yet. All right, cool. But uh, once the world soon. is ready, you know, this is the place you're going to. We're going to do breaking news here. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. All right. got to be exclusive <laughs> Yoshi's podcast new. <laughs> you're going to get the exclusive rights. Nice. Of course. Of course. That's good. But it's fun though, right? Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And the thing is, like, it's. Um, you know, it's it, 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 it. People take themselves too seriously sometimes, and mm -hmm. it, it doesn't need to be. I mean, yeah. it just it just needs to be something that you want to do. And if someone likes it, great. If they don't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If it makes you happy, or if like someone, you know, enjoys listening to it, or you enjoy doing it yeah. and being creative, then great. You know, I'm. Uh, I think the same as you. I'm not. I'm not doing this because like I'm going to be the next Joe Rogan. Yeah. That's that's not. Yeah, that's in that's my job. That's your job, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't listen to that dude, but it's um, it, you know, that's not that's not my goal, and uh, yeah, it's just fun. It's just yeah. fun, and it's an excuse. I think you said it on one of your other episodes. It's it's an excuse to just actually sit down and talk to people, yeah. um, and have a good conversation, um. And I'm doing one with with my brother and mm -hmm. uh, one of my best mates, and it, yeah, uh, even that brings us closer. We're already yeah. joined by blood and being best mates, but yeah, you get um, yeah, you get an excuse to spend time together and uh, yeah. talk about something you love. So even with your closest friends, you don't do you know this kind of deep conversation no. that often no. usually you're, you're having dinner or you're you right. know, doing something doing and, and something. you have a uh, 20 minutes 30 minutes here and there but but just sitting down talking for two three hours i mean it doesn't really happen that much no. um and that's why i think podcasts have become so popular mm -hmm. because we all yearn for that deep conversation where you just get lost in in in, in topic going, going from one topic to the next right. i mean we've you know developed years and years and years of evolution yeah. um, of needing a deep human connection yeah. and like needing to talk and, uh, you know, share your ideas and, and be listened to, be seen, be yeah. heard. And we've gone in the matter of years to, shit, I'm not talking to you unless it's by a Snapchat. Yeah. Uh, I think what Snapchat yeah. was the number one form of communication of people between the age of, 11 and 21 in the US yeah. or something like that. It's probably TikTok now, but yeah, you know, it's 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 wild and it moves so quickly. Yeah, and, and I during the pandemic that was something that I was really that really got to me because I was at that time I was uh single yeah. and uh 
all my interactions pretty much especially in the beginning when when no one yeah. knew what the hell was going when on when everyone thought the world was yeah. ending yeah. yeah i was one of them all of the interaction interactions <laughs> were through a screen right you know I, I i worked from home and had interactions through teams or yeah. whatever with yeah. my colleagues and then you know s social media tinder whatever with with people outside of work right and i i it was maddening it was maddening i i just wanted to do something that is not connected to a screen yeah yeah i i really felt it during I the hate. pandemic like i need to do something that that has nothing to do with a screen so this is interesting because during the pandemic everyone you know people i worked with friends and stuff they were like oh my god you know how are you surviving the pandemic uh, mm. with with kids and stuff like this mm, right that was my savior oh, yeah. like I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I had yeah. people in my house, like I wasn't alone. Exactly, exactly. I could talk, admittedly, I could talk to a four-year-old, but you know, oh, it's still good it's conversation. The, it's sometimes. the human touch. Yeah. I remember because in the beginning when everyone was super scared, I didn't even hug my mother. Right. Yes. And, oh, it's so weird to And think. I was single. So, you know, I didn't have that right. at home. So I had no human touch with anyone Yeah. for, you know, a, I don't know, a few weeks, months, whatever it was. It just sucked. Right. It just sucked. Yeah. The, the people I knew that struggled the most were the people that were the most isolated. Yeah. And for generally sure. it was single people. Yeah. Um, and, or people who lived alone or, uh, people who just moved to Sweden or something or moved to England or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, don't get me wrong. There were times where you were like, you're stuck inside your house for months on end with two kids. Mm -hmm. It's definitely maddening, but mm -hmm. I'd pick that any day of being stuck inside a house yeah. with my own thoughts. <laughs> That's way darker. <laughs> 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 yeah. Give me, give me yeah. the door of the Explorer on repeat any day of the yeah. week. Like, um, and I was talking to a friend of mine and, you know, he was, um, he was struggling. He was on his own and he was like, mm. you know, I just need, to have some human contact because uh, yeah. once that's taken away from you, you realize how much you miss it. Mm -hmm. And everyone's talking about, you know, okay, what did, what did we learn through the pandemic? Uh, digitalization is here, you know, retail I'm from the retail industry that struggled. Yeah. And then as soon as it was over, retail picked straight back up again because people like human interaction. Um, digital features have become more accessible. Everyone is more digitalized, which is great. Mm -hmm. but we have to have to have to have that human interaction. It's yeah. so important. Totally. And geez, if I didn't have that during the pandemic, like if I was, if 21 year old Andy, who was a fucking mess of a human being, by the way, hmm. um, without, you know, Amanda and my, my, uh, my wife and kids, mm -hmm. if I was stuck in the pandemic, my God, that would have been a different story. Yeah. I tell you that would have been a different story. And we were lucky in Sweden. Yeah, exactly. Like it was because it was it was not even real lockdown. We didn't lockdown. have any proper lockdowns. It was you know gyms were open, yes. all that kind of stuff. So, and also you have beautiful nature here, and you can actually yeah. be out and you know imagine living in the middle of London during the pandemic. Yeah, and being on hardcore lockdown, mm -hmm. and you know being on your own. I just talked to someone from Barcelona. They had a uh, was it four? No, wait. Uh, she, she told me about. Um, family in Argentina where they had a 10 month lockdown. Jeez. 10 months where people were, you know, trapped in their homes. I mean, it, it, it's, it's crazy. So wild. It's crazy. This, this whole, we don't, need to, we don't need to get into too much of the pandemic, but it just showed how But it's going to be such crazy. a big part of our history now. Yeah. How, how quickly things go crazy and how yeah. quickly people accept Yes. crazy stuff yeah. like if you would have told someone oh my God, you yeah. know we're gonna lock the population down in your apartments for 10 months <laughs> i can't like five years ago i can't imagine what they would have to say yeah. for people to be like yeah that makes sense yeah, yeah. <laughs> just you know jeez yeah, uh, the pandemic opened up so many interesting conversations mm. and so many i mean there's still we still don't really know what the effects of the pandemic are going to be mm -hmm. because I mean, that that's, you know, a few years down the line still like yeah. the psychological effects on people. Um, you know, obviously Sweden took a very different approach to a lot of Western countries. Yeah. And I remember like my friends in England messaging me going, Oh my God, are you okay? I'm like, well, yeah, I'm, mm, I'm doing all right. Right, right, right. There was a lot like, of propaganda about yeah, Sweden. Yeah, exactly. a huge amount. And they were like, but the government's not helping you. I'm like, mm. yeah, no, I mean, like, shit, I went to the shops today and I'm yeah. all right. And they were like, but 
but this is going to kill everyone. And I was like, well, I mean, the news that I'm reading is not that drastic. And I think Sweden, I mean, there was definitely a lot of propaganda in Swedish news as well, but it wasn't on the level of yeah. reading the Daily Mail in England where you literally, I read it once just out of curiosity. And I was like, well, might as well just, <laughs> might as well say goodbye now. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, and then in America, I worked with, um, when I was working, I worked with the U.S., um, and yeah, the stuff they were being told and fed and, and the fear mongering that was done. Now, don't mm. get me wrong. Like, I'm not going to go into conspiracy theories or anything like that. Cause you know, I think, I think it was all, um, we didn't know what we were dealing with. So people reacted in different ways. And, yeah. and, but in Sweden, at least, you know, you had, you were able to go out, you were able to go to the shops, you know, we were able to go to each other's houses. You took obviously much more precaution than we do today, but. There wasn't a mask mandate. There wasn't anything like that. So we've gone through like what twenty percent of what the rest of the world has gone yeah, through, yeah. and it was still fucked up for us. Like, like yeah. so, I mean, the psychological effects of that are not going to be Dude, seen for I a few more years. Like friends in the U.S. and Canada, mm. so many just started drinking more, yeah. smoking weed. You know, well, I mean, domestic abuse went through the roof yeah, during the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, ridiculous. Yeah. Enough about the pandemic. Yeah, exactly. This is a this is a rabbit hole. The pandemic is a rabbit There's, hole. It, like you said, it has exposed a lot of stuff. Yeah, and we could do a full like three four hour episode right, exactly on the shit that the these last few years are exposed. <laughs> but we have we have other fun stuff to talk about. Um, comedy. Yes, you, love it. You're into comedy. Mm. Love comedy. Actually, like I was saying to you as I this morning. I finally got the time to watch Ricky Gervais's um, last stand-up. Mm, supernatural. Ah, uh, so good. And it's like, I mean, the things I love about comedy is that, I mean, it's all subjective, right? I mean, mm. everyone finds different things funny. But I, like I say, I like poking the bear. I like seeing what yeah. responses you can get from people. Obviously, not going too far, but my God, he pokes the bear. He's, and it's... He is. He uh, is. He is like the master of doing that, without crossing the line right, and still being likable like he, he's so he, good he he just he's so good at like forming the exact right words to yeah. poke the shit out of that bear right but he doesn't say anything wrong right there's not a lot of like calls to cancel him well there I are mean, but compared to some other yeah true comedians true. he doesn't get that as much true. i think um both my brother and myself are big ricky gervais fans yeah and he was coming to Stockholm um, a few years ago. And my brother bumped into him. Oh, yeah. Like uh, right outside of his work. He, he used he used to work, or he still does, in Gamla Stan. Yeah. And uh, Ricky Gervais was just, you know, walking around Stockholm. And yep. my brother bumps into him. And, you know, my brother's starstruck. <laughs> it's it's so cool to yeah. bump into Ricky. And he said, like, oh, we're going to, I'm actually coming to see your show tonight. I oh, know. And, and Ricky is, like, you know, doing his his thing. Yeah. He, he was not very, like, he didn't want to, like, stop and talk or whatever. Sure. But my brother was, you know, polite and was like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm going to actually watch your show tonight. He's like, oh, cool, cool. And then my brother is, like, points to the building and he's like, I work, like, right there. <laughs> Ricky is like, okay. Psycho. <laughs> and, you know, because in my brother's head, it's like, wow, I bumped into Ricky Gervais right outside of my office. You know, it's cool. But from Ricky's point of view, that's like, yeah. okay, I don't give a shit. <laughs> so it was like the most awkward exchange. My brother is super excited, big smile. Like, I work right over there. <laughs> But it's like I, I remember doing a similar thing. I used to when I was like when I was young, I was like seventeen or something. I was working at a very fancy hotel um, that had a very, lot of A list clientele. Mm -hmm. And I remember I'm a massive Arsenal fan, and I walked straight into Cesc Fabregas when he was oh. playing for Arsenal. Oh. Literally straight into him. Round, he came out of a door as I came around the corner, and I walked straight into him. And I was holding a tray, and luckily I didn't spill anything on him. But I remember looking up and seeing him and I went, Oh, sorry. And he was like, no, no problem. And I went, you're welcome. <laughs> and then I walked off and I, I've never felt more stupid in my entire life. Like just lost. And I, I don't 
you know, I didn't, well, I didn't think I got starstruck, but obviously yeah. sometimes you just get a bit lost. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, but he's it's a legend. interesting. You, you just, you don't know how you're going to react. Mm. I, I have the, my biggest like starstruck moment is on video. It no was, way. It was broadcast to the world. What? Yeah. What? On, on US national TV. Wait, what? I was in, um, I was in, um, uh, in LA. Yeah. Walking around in, um, is it Hollywood? Where all the stars are? The, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Ho- Hollywood, yeah. Yeah, the, the the walk, what is it called? Walk of Fame. Or... Walk of Fame? Is that what it's called? I don't know. I'm guessing now. I should know this. I've been all there the so many stars times. on the ground. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, that place. The, that street. <laughs> We're walking around there. <laughs> and we see this, like, crowd gathering. Yeah. And um, I'm with my friends and we're like, oh, let's see what's going on. And we go there and there's, like, a basketball hoop and... Uh, it, they they kind of like uh, oh no where are you going sh- with this shel- uh, sheltered off a little area yeah and we asked someone like what's going on they're like oh Jimmy Kimmel is uh, gonna record here we're like oh cool yeah. and I at the time I I loved Jimmy Kimmel I was watching a lot of his uh, show and we just we just we got there late but at right before they started recording they kind of like uh, rearranged the the set okay so we. Ended up being right at the front. Oh shit! And out comes Jimmy Kimmel with, uh, I think it was Tracy Morgan. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the actor and he and Tracy was supposed to like shoot a shot on the hoop, and if he does, everyone wins Xboxes. But we were late. We never signed up for the ah, for the Xbox thing because we were shit, late. Yeah. But because they rearranged, we just ended up being right at the front. And Jimmy comes <laughs> out, and we're this close, like you and I right now. Yeah. And I'm just like, my, my smile goes from ear to ear. I look like a complete idiot. And I'm just like into every word he's saying, you know, and Tracy Morgan, he's saying some funny stuff and they're, you know, they're, they're doing their thing. And, uh, he shoots his shot and this is all like recorded with their, you know, TV cameras. And afterwards I see it. So I'm right behind Jimmy and Tracy in, in the first shot. Uh, with my stupid smile <laughs> and then they change to the other angle when he's shooting and I'm right next to them on that angle as well like you can see me perfectly in in, in both angles looking like a complete moron I need to see this I don't even like I don't even know what they're saying I'm just laughing because they're saying it and I'm like ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> It's, <laughs> it's the dumbest I've ever looked in my life and he makes the shot and everyone goes crazy and um yeah, I just I just looked like a complete idiot, and that was broadcast obviously on national television in the U.S. and put on YouTube. So I don't know how many million people have seen my <laughs> stupid face <laughs> be the most starstruck I've ever been in my life, like a complete moron. But I can imagine, I can almost see your face in front of me. It, I bet you looked exactly how um, all the audience in oh, what, what's the, the 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 hidden camera show like America's Funniest Videos yeah. you know when they present it and they're in sort of the audience mm. and they go around and talk and the audience is sitting there like just trying to smile yeah. they look super awkward I can see you I can see you <laughs> oh, that's bad man that's yeah. bad Dude, luckily no offense but I don't think anyone gave a shit probably you. not probably not <laughs> but I can imagine there has been a decent number of conversations where people are like, hey, uh, look, look at, at that, that idiot. <laughs> <laughs> people are watching, like, look at that dumbass oh, in the hat. <laughs> I gotta see this now. Yeah, I'll, I'll show it to you. Send I still have it, it. I still have it, yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, what's the biggest star you've uh, in- interacted with? Yeah, good question. I... <laughs> there is a... <laughs> There was a funny story about when um, I was uh, working and I was in New York and uh, I used to work for um, a sneaker company and we did a lot of releases and events and stuff like that. And um, we had a big release one day and the bouncers that were there were also like, they were they were there all the time. So they were good guys. We had a good, we had a lot of banter with them. They were great fun. And then they were working at an event in the evening, later on in the evening, and um, it was uh, the Migos listening party for the, for the mm-hmm. first or second album, I can't remember. Um, and 
they invited us and I was like, yeah, sure. We'll, we'll come down. So it was me and a couple of other people went down and the crowd outside was absolutely ridiculous. It mm. was like, it was, there was more people outside than I'd ever seen in my life pretty much. And there was like the mayor of New York was apparently there. No, not the mayor. The, the chief of police was there on like a loudspeaker and everyone needs to disperse. We're shutting this down. Mm. Um, and then as people started going, they sort of carried on and just let more people in, but most of the people dispersed. And we were standing there waiting outside and one of the bouncers saw me. He's like, Andy. I'm like, yeah. So he drags me, pulls me through this crowd. We come into this, um, yeah, venue where they're doing the, the listening party. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm quite hard to miss. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a fairly big guy. I was also one of a very few white people at this mm. event. So I stood out like a sore thumb. Um, and we were standing there uh, that night. I got three, um, mixtapes given to me by people that thought <laughs> I was a producer. So that, that was fun. I've still got one of them at home actually. Nice. It's so bad. Anyway. Um, so, so I was standing there looking totally out of place, awkward as fuck in the middle of this crowd. Um, and we had the listening party and then the bouncers, he was like, come, come, I'll take you guys to the green room. Yeah. I was like, Oh, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm okay. I think we're going to head off. He said, no, 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 come, come, come. So we're going to the green room. We sit down, he brings us some bottles and I'm sitting there and I look next to me and it's Nicki Minaj. Oh. And I was like, hi. And she was like, hello. <laughs> You're and like, I'm a producer. <laughs> No, you what, show off uh, three mixtapes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, Nikki, you wanna <laughs> wanna give me your mixtape? It was so awkward because I literally turned and went hello, and she went hello, and then she kind of like looked to the floor and looked away, and I looked to the floor and looked away, and then oh, no. and then my friend sitting next to me was like, "You're a fucking idiot. Why did you, why did you do that?" <laughs> I was like, and then later on I was at the, I was like getting another drink and, and she was there. She was like, hello, weird person. I was like, hello. Oh, that's and that's, funny. that's my interaction. So nice. yeah. And, uh, so I'm, she acknowledged your existence. That's well, big. the fact that I looked awkward. <laughs> yeah. I think that was, <laughs> that was, that's what gave it away. That's hilarious. It's like, I definitely look like the only, you know, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I gotta right, be careful right, how so... I formulate myself. I was the only. Uh, I was I was awkward, man. I was yeah, awkward, yeah. and I remember at that time that was my phase where I, I had um, I have beard and I always wear a beanie and I had these like like comical almost rimmed glasses. So yeah. I stood out like I w it wasn't just because I was tall and yeah um and stuff, but it was uh I definitely looked definitely looks awkward i was like i was the guy where someone goes ah oh, who brought their dad you mm. know that was me you're the guy who gentrified everyone out of brooklyn <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> don't put that evil on me man like, i got friends in brooklyn like <laughs> no. all right all right <laughs> um so i had a i had a oh i you made me think of two stories yeah. All right. So say a number one or two, two, two. All right. So, uh, I, the worst concert I've ever been to, like the, the worst live performance ever. Yeah. Um, Drake Whoa. At, at Coachella. What you mean? Drake's not good. I, it was, it was such a bad performance that it's like comical. I like Drake. Like yeah. I like a lot of his music. He's extremely talented. Uh, but this live performance, I don't know. <laughs> he was he was the headliner. He was the he was wrapping up all of Coachella, and Coachella is huge. There's yeah, like you know I don't know two three hundred thousand people. That's a big deal. It's a huge huge uh, festival, and he's the headliner. Like he's wrapping the entire thing up. All right. Uh, the night before that, the weekend was wrapping up, and we my friend and I we went to see the weekend, and he was he was really good. But, you know, he, he does kind of his, uh, um, like R and B stuff. Yeah. And, and this was a festival where, you know, there's a lot of action going on. Yeah. So you've been listening to, you know, all this crazy electronic music, uh, yeah. for, for, for days. And then the weekend comes out and he's amazing. But after a while, after like, you know, 30, 40 minutes, we start feeling like, all right, let's go check out something else. Um, and we start 
getting out of the crowd and getting uh, he, getting out of the crowd at the main stage at Coachella, it takes a while. You know, oh, it's God. it's probably more than a hundred thousand people just on that stage. And uh, so we're walking to to get out of the crowd, and uh, we hear na 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 wait till I get my what? money right. We're like. Can we? <laughs> <laughs> and we just my friend just grabs me like fucking start running back kanye comes out of the uh, out on the stage does a surprise appearance and just goes crazy like oh, he's so Jesus. good he was so good and he does like six seven songs together with weekend you know and everyone we were not the only ones you know yeah, leaving. Yeah, yeah. everyone just turned around and started running back towards the stage and everyone just went crazy it was amazing it was so good so the next day we're like all right drake has got a he's gonna have to beat that oh so we actually wanted to go see kaigo um mm. but we had to choose between kaigo and drake and we chose drake because we're thinking after what the weekend did last night like he's gonna be bringing out a lot of you know people it's gonna <laughs> right. be it's gonna be something amazing uh <clears throat> so we get to the stage and uh we're sitting there and it's the stage is empty he's he, he, it's not his time yet and um, I don't know, he's supposed to go up or whatever, 11. It, it, it turns to 11, he's still not there. 11, 10, still not there. 11, 15, still not there. And at a festival, people are usually on time. Yeah. You know? yeah. But all right, he's the headliner. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's the last, last person to do this. So I guess he's doing his thing. Uh, I don't know, 20 minutes pass, 25 minutes pass. People get impatient, start hearing some, you know, chants like get drink out or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I know. And um, so people are a little bit anxious and music comes on. Lose yourself, yeah. Eminem. And everyone goes crazy. We're like, holy shit. He's going to start the show by bringing out Eminem? Are you kidding? No. Like 150,000 people are like, ah! <laughs> Turns out, no, it's just a song playing. Ah oh, no! No one comes on stage. Someone just put on oh, the no. song. <laughs> so people are like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like people are booing. Like oh. he, just, someone just put on, uh, put on a you know Spotify Quick, list. Put on shuffle, and, and, and it, it starts with Eminem. It was like, "Come on, man! Everyone, everyone would love oh, to see shit. that." Eminem and Drake. That would have been yeah. good. Yeah. Right. Um, so that the the song just plays and then runs out and then uh, the next song plays and it's it's a Spotify playlist and we're like oh. Jesus all right uh, finally he comes out and people are like yay you know he starts doing his stuff and he's good he 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 performs decently um, but he's he's a bit of a I mean everyone has their art form but he's very like he, he used to do. Uh, uh, daytime TV and right. shit. So he's he's kind of dramatic. He's like yeah. got like fake rain coming down on him, and he oh, falls down on his no knees, way. and he's like oh. like flashed on stuff. It's a little bit corny, but you know <laughs> we're we're enjoying it. And uh, he does some of his tracks, and I don't know. Half hour passes. We're starting to get tired of you know just <laughs> just Drake because we're not huge Drake fans, my, right. my friend. We, we but we're thinking he's gonna start bringing people out. Uh, 40 minutes pass, he starts doing his R&B shit and we're like, ah, should we go? Should we stay? Uh, song comes on that I know and love that features the second verse is Lil Wayne. Uh, so the song comes on like, yes, now it's happening. Boy, All right, boy. he's going to bring out Lil Wayne. This is going to be good. <laughs> uh, he does his, his verse and it's really good. And then the chorus and then Lil Wayne's verse is about to start and they cut the song. We're like, what the fuck? So they just they just muted it out for Lil Wayne's part. What? And he just went to the next song. And it's like, dude, <laughs> like, are you trying to piss us off? Like, what are you doing? It's 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 what I said. Like, it was the show was like built to fuck with us. Right. It was ridiculous. So so that happens, and we're still like, ah, all right, should we stay? Should we go check out the the, the end of Kaigo's show? And then, you know, a couple more songs pass and he's like, oh, I'm going to bring out a friend of mine. We're like, fucking Fine. finally, <laughs> he's going to bring someone out. So <clears throat> he's like, 
uh, yeah, it's a special friend of mine, Miss Nicki Minaj, come out. And we're like, all right, cool, <laughs> better than Drake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Nicki Minaj comes out in like this cute little dress, dressed like a princess. She's got a tiara and whatever. And uh, she comes out and gives him a hug and waves to the crowd and then starts walking back out again. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Is this a joke? And he's like, yo, yo, Nikki, babe, come back, come back. We're like, ah, oh, okay, it, it's, a, it's a joke. It's a bit. It's yeah. a bit. She comes back out and he's like, you can't leave before giving me a kiss. And then she, they like kiss on the cheek or whatever. And then she leaves. What? I'm like, oh man, are you, are you kidding? Like, what is this? Like, this is torture. <laughs> At least, you know, a bunch of people were Drake fans, so they enjoy all the Drake stuff. We were there like, oh, man, come on, <laughs> bring out anyone. <laughs> and uh, so that happens. And then he does some more of his own music and uh, he doesn't bring out anyone and the show ends. And uh, usually, like, w people people are, like, pretty upset at this point. Yeah. <laughs> There's some chance. <laughs> and... Uh, Usually when someone ends, they, they turn down the lights and, uh, you know, wrap things up, yeah. <clears throat> but they left the lights on. Oh, so no. everyone stays. Everyone's oh, like, fuck. oh, okay. He's, False he's, hope. he's gonna, there's, there's gotta be something more. There's gotta be something more. <laughs> the, 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 the stage is lit. Everything is just there. We're just, people start chanting. We want more. We want more. Drake, come back. You know, yeah, that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. Build that wall. No, I'm kidding. Uh, and um, Rome Festival. <laughs> Festival. And uh, we're just waiting, and something like you know, 20 minutes pass, and people come out to start tearing down the stage to shut down the, the show. What an anticlimax! It was so bad. It was so bad, and this was the end, the grand finale of Coachella, of three nights of Coachella. It was insane. Like, literally, you couldn't have, you know, planned it to be more torturous yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in terms of a, a live performance. So, yeah. Oh, poor Horrible. Drake. No, 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 no. No, he did. We were there the second weekend. Coachella is two weeks. Okay. So, we were there the second weekend. And we, after this, we read the reviews. And the first weekend, same reviews. People were like shitting on him because of this. Oh. And this was the second weekend. That's why he brought out Nicky. Uh, yeah, that was, his, that was his big improvement to bring out a Nicky uh, to wave. <laughs> so, yeah. This is, so, you know, I, I can't say too bad or, or, or poor Drake because he, he could have done yeah, something. No, I think he's, uh, I think missed, he's good. We missed Kaigo. I think he's fine. Yeah, he's doing, he's doing all right. <laughs> I th yeah, I don't think he's, I don't think he's laying a, a bed at night thinking, oh, man. No, I let the people down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. So that's the that's the worst live performance I've ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> so was it was it bad because you were expecting something else to happen, yeah. or was it just badly performed? It was, no, it was he was all right. He was all right, but I didn't like the corny stuff, uh -huh. so I, I wouldn't go see him live again. What's um, the best concert you've been to? Oh, it's it's something I would have never thought I would say. Until I was actually there. Oh yeah, Skrillex. What? Yeah. Okay. Skrillex was insane. I was at Skrillex at Monegros, which is a like a desert festival outside of Barcelona. Nice. And I, I could, I did not think a dude with a computer could like <laughs> dominate a stage, but he did. It was amazing. It was the tour that he had where he his his set was like his, the whole stage was like a a spaceship. Like he was oh, sitting in a sick. big spaceship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was his setup and <clears throat> he was just like all over the place. He was like jumping uh, off of his spaceship and <laughs> like all of the, all of the, uh, lights and sounds were fully coordinated. So it was, everything was just beautifully executed. And, you know, Skrillex music is all about buildups and drops. Yeah, yeah. And you would think like after a few buildups and drops, you'd kind of get tired of it, but no, <laughs> <laughs> no, every every build up, like you know, tens of thousands of people are like, oh, yeah. and then the drops, and everyone's like, oh. <laughs> I can imagine so it was it was crazy. Uh, I, had, the, I had a blast. The best one I've ever been to was Green Day 
Mm. And I was, what was I, 16? I think my uncle nice. took me. It was a, I think it was probably my first concert. And I remember I was a big Green Day fan at the time. I was going through my sort of skater boy yeah. grunge era that everybody went through in like the <laughs> early 2000s kind of, you know. Um, and we went to the concert and it was it was sick. They were amazing. And we were in like in the, well, I suppose you could call it a mosh pit. It wasn't exactly a mosh pit because it was Green Day, but it was, yeah, we were close. Yeah. And then towards the end, they're like, you know, they start doing some instrumental stuff and then they're like, okay, we need someone who can play the drums. And then people start cheering and then they bring someone up and they're like, okay, yeah. you're going to play the drums. Okay. Now we need someone to play the bass. Ah, everyone cheering, playing the bass. And then they go, okay, now we need someone to play lead guitar. And we're quite close to the front. So two weeks before this, I started learning to play the guitar. <laughs> Two weeks, right? <laughs> I could play half of Wonderwall, not even like, like it, I was so bad because no. also I left-handed. So like the first week was me trying to play on a right-hand yeah. guitar. Like I could, I could do maybe one chord, and my uncle starts screaming and pointing at me, going, no. "This guy plays the guitar!" And they look at me, dead in the eyes, and they would, I swear to you, they were just about to point to me, and I literally went, "No, no. please, no." <laughs> Please don't pick me. Oh, um, and I was this close to getting fucking picked to go up on stage. And what would, what would I have done? Yeah. I would have gone up there and be like, yeah, I can do, I think I can do a C. Wait, wait, hold on. Let oh, me. God, that would have been oh, bad. That would have been the worst thing ever, man. That and would been, to you, make, you would have been booed by Oh, I, I would have been crucified. And as a 16-year-old boy, yeah. <laughs> that would have ruined my life. Like, I would have been, my, now that would have been awful. You, and you, then, you would not have had, you know, flirt on the Pendleton no, game. <laughs> That level of confidence would wow. never have been This is a up. sliding doors moment because then I might be like an expert on Tinder by now or yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> that would have ruined me. You would have been writing that guide. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, it was awful. And then almost to make things, almost rub salt in the wounds, they brought this, they picked another kid from the crowd. They brought him up. And this kid was better than they were at playing guitar. I'm not even kidding you. He was insane. And he was so ad libbing cool. and freestyling. And he could play every song and he was even singing. Like, and I was like, damn, this kid's a fucking star. Could you imagine if they brought me yeah. up with my oh, one my chord? God. Fuck, I would have ruined their whole show. <sighs> You could have yeah. you could have just gone. Ah, I'm left-handed. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm really good on the other side, but <laughs> this is no, what you get. They would have brought out left-handed guitar and just humiliated me. <laughs> that would have been even worse. Yeah, I know. I'll never <laughs> forgive my uncle for that. Yeah, yeah that's was, that's harsh. That was that's harsh. That was a game changer. I I that that would have been he he must have like he would have laughed his ass off. Oh yeah. yeah. No, he 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 knew perfectly well that I knew. <laughs> one chord <laughs> no no this. this was totally intentional <laughs> he totally he totally killed me like honestly oh, and the whole car journey home he was like giggling like he's a big dude i could literally see his shoulders just moving up and down the whole car journey home because he was like <laughs> and he's south african he's like ah you nearly put on stage eh? it was close <laughs> man. Yeah. there we go he came out he came out nice <laughs> Uh, Man, that, that's hilarious but I, I love it when they pull people up and yeah, they're amazing right that's there's, sick. There, there's this video of uh, uh, Michael Bublé is mm. that his name I've seen this one yeah I, I always think it's Michelle or something like that I don't know if it's Michael Bublé I don't know Bublé that sounds guy. about right when he brings out that kid his mom the kid's mom is like he can sing right. and he's like alright sure I'm, I'm sure he can and he's and the insane. kid is like amazing yeah. Bublé is just like holy shit right. come up come up come up <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's such a cool moment. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that was good. It was good. That kind of set the bar for concerts for me. So everything after that was like a little bit of a disappointment. Mm, yeah, <laughs> but uh, actually, MGMT was good. We were watching MGMT in Dublin, and they didn't play "Kids," which is like their most famous song. They didn't play. They it? didn't play it. Oh, and then they went off stage, and and then at the end, like everyone was like. Um, Oh no. What? There must be an encore. So everyone started doing the and then that was going on for like a good ten minutes. And eventually they came out and like played it and then everyone went mad. That was fun. That was fun. Irish people are wild. Oh, but that's good. I <clears throat> I had a I had another shitty concert. I was in Barcelona. I think that was the same trip where where I went to Monegros for the Skrillex. The first evening we get there and uh they are giving out these uh, 
they're selling tickets to um oh shit I, now i can't even remember the, the guy's name <sighs> If you ain't got no ass, bitch, wear a poncho. What's his name? <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> that's that's the line I remember. This is great. This is great. Well, what the fuck is his name? Ah, uh, rapper. Tyga. Tyga. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. You've heard of Tyga, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, <laughs> We we uh, we get off the like train in central Barcelona, and the first thing we see is people selling tickets for a Taiga concert, and there's yeah. like these posters on the wall. Um, we're not Taiga fans, but it's that evening, and we're like, Pat, we don't have anything better to do. Right. Let's uh, why not? Why not? So we buy tickets, and um, the show starts at like nine or whatever. Um, we. We're doing our thing, walking around town. We get to the, we go to the venue around nine. The the line is like four blocks. It's like insane. It's a huge line. And they're like, all right, this is not going to happen. So he was big at one point, right? I, I don't know. Maybe. Ish. I guess. Big yeah, enough, it, it big clearly. Enough so, um, so we're like, all right, let's go have a few drinks somewhere. And then, you know, in a few hours, we go back, catch the final songs. That would be great. Um, so we do that. Like I, almost three hours later, we go to the venue, no line. We just go straight through. We get in. He has not even got on stage. Ooh. <laughs> we, we, we came three hours late. Dude was not on stage yet. And we get in. Drinks are like, this is Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. You get drinks, I don't know, like five, six euros over there. Drinks are like 35 euros. And people, like that amount of people have been, you know, let in three hours, no show. We get to the crowd. We're like, oh, nice. We get to see the whole show. Still, while we're there, we waited another like half an hour. Yeah. And people were like booing. There, there was a, you know, some, some music being played in between every song. Yeah. When it's quiet, everyone is like, boo. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, people started sitting down. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In front of the stage, everyone just, you know, tired of right. standing. And right. It's kind of protest. Everyone just sat down. And then, you know, finally he comes out. He does, you know, his first track. And as soon as the first track ends, everyone is like, boom. Oh, oh no. At his own concert, you know. Oh, so that's, that's bad. bad. That's, that's bad. bad. Really bad. Yeah. So yeah, that was another bad one. Jeez, yeah. But then the concert was pretty good. He was he was all right. Oh man, it's better mean, than Drake. Oh really? Yeah. Huh? Cause, well, because we had no expectations. Right, that's true. Yeah, and you weren't expecting yeah. Lil Wayne and Eminem to yeah. turn up, right? Oh man, that was such a disappointment. <laughs> Still mad at Drake. That's so funny. So I can't watch the Raptors. Oh yeah. No, I. Oh, we I, need to talk about basketball. We haven't talked about basketball at all. How have we not? That's how we sort of became friends. It's true. It's true. I mean, who actually, who, who brought me into this group? I did. You did. I, so I'll tell the story. We, uh, I had, I have this, uh, fantasy league with a bunch of friends. Oh yeah. I, I just You've kind of, of expect everyone to know about this. League At this point, people, people probably know. I mean, it dominates so much of my life yeah. that everybody else should know about yeah. it. So, uh, we needed new, uh, <laughs> new owners, new players for the, for the league and, I was invited to a group chat, a WhatsApp group with a different league. Yes. So I was invited there by a, by a guy we knew in common. And um, I just immediately said, like, I'm already in a league, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to be joining this one. There, it's enough. But we are actually looking for new people. If anyone wants to join our league, we'll, we need like one or two people. Yeah. And you said, I'm interested. You yeah. wanted to be in both. And that's then, then I invited you to our group chat. And that's the only way and only contact we had for like three, four years. More, probably. probably more. <laughs> yeah. So I just took you from one group chat to another right. group chat. And that was that. And the other league like disbanded after like one season. So yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's crazy because there was what, at least three or four years where people thought I didn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. I've just blown my cover. <laughs> Oh no. no, no, this is all AI. This is all AI. <laughs> exactly. I just created a voice for Andy. 
so this is the thing like i remember it was a good few years i could get away with just like pretending to be your alter ego and yeah. you know it was way easy i could say whatever the fuck i wanted i just blame it on you it yeah. was great <laughs> Shit, now people know I'm a real person. Yeah, we couldn't do any trades because people would just think I had a fake account Literally, doing yeah. trades with myself. <laughs> I yeah. even called myself Yoshi 2 one year. Oh, yeah, yeah you did. You yeah. did. I need yeah. to go back to that. That was confusing. That was good luck. Yeah, you, probably the best you did. <laughs> hey, 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 Mr. Consistent. Hey. I'm fourth place yeah, every year. Yeah, you're consistently not winning. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm always in the Champions League, right? I mean, that's that's more important. Yeah, because you get revenue for this, right? Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's weird because out of that, like, uh, like I said, I spend way too much of my actual own personal time reading basketball statistics and really? trying to trade people and do all this stuff and watching it games. It doesn't show at oh, all. Oh, don't. <laughs> That was low. All right, that was low. <laughs> it was. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the crazy thing is I, I don't know nine, no, not nine, eight out of the ten people in that league. I don't, I don't, I've never met them. Yeah, yeah. You're the only person I've met. Yeah, here we were, like, talking shit about the digital era. Right. And it brought us and together. Look and at, look at this. Like, it, it has become an integral part of your life, yeah. this, this fantasy league. Yeah, definitely. My, my wife's heard way too much about it. <laughs> Like she's imagine. so sick of it. Like, I can imagine. She's like, um, we need to plan uh, dinners for the coming week. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. I need to see if Jose Aldo, not Jose Aldo, what? <laughs> Rob Sport. Who is Jose Aldo? Is that the NFL? <laughs> it's, it's a That's UFC hilarious. fighter. <laughs> oh no, what's his name? Alvar uh, Alvarado. Yes. If he's uh, worth picking up. <laughs> if he's... <laughs> Oh man, that was, that was rough. Just bummed his name completely. You have to, you have to see, yeah. Um, fantasy League takes a lot of uh, time. Yeah. I yeah. mean, dude, my wife's heard way too much of me talking about Fantasy League. I swear. It's so much fun, though. It is, it's but. so much fun. Nobody understands. I think you are the person I have the most communication with of anyone in my life. One. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we have met th three times, three four times. times. Uh, but we're just constantly oh, wild. Uh, talking uh, uh, fantasy in, on WhatsApp, and it's great it's, fun. It's fun, so much fun. It is, but I mean, there's no way of explaining what it is without sounding like an absolute oh, yeah. nerd. Oh, right? yeah. I play fantasy basketball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's nerdy as hell. It's I mean, so, it is but it's nerdy awesome. because, like, when I talk to people who are not this deeply entrenched, yeah. And they just say something, and I just bring up stats. Right, They're right. Like, like, dude, what? what? Exactly. <laughs> and I don't even feel like it, it's it's a part of my life, but it's I, I don't think it's that big. But I, but, but it is. It is. It is. The it first is. thing I do when I wake up is check. You know, right. where, where am I? I know. And there's nothing else that will make you want to watch like the Houston Rockets yeah. play the OKC Thunder. You, you have this season oh, three Houston Rockets yeah, players. No. And for those who don't follow basketball, they they suck. Basically, yeah. Houston Rockets are terrible. Yeah, they're not good. So you've been forced to watch a lot of, or you haven't been forced to watch, but I'm sure you've been watching yeah. because you have three guys yeah. there. I've been watching Has it too been much. Fun? No, 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 not at all. Um, yeah, no, I'm not making that mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same for me. I've been watching so many Raptors games. I have three Raptors oh, on yeah. my team. Yeah, exactly. So at the start of the season, they were so good, but they just, they just, I don't know. Just it's crazy. Like I'm a Clippers fan. But I can't. I, I don't have time to watch any Clippers games yeah. because I'm too busy watching the Houston no, Rockets. You, you get gotta draft out. your favorite players if you want to watch that team. Otherwise, the problem is, like, I can't draft Kawhi Leonard. Like, well, yeah. I mean, apparently you can now because apparently he's good. Yeah, now he's good. Now yeah. well, he's always been good. Apparently he's healthy for yeah, the first yeah. time. Who's got him? Cena. Ah oh, man, Cena. I, I tell you, I think one of the things I'm most thankful about about this basketball group is having Cena introduced into my life. <laughs> Honestly, this guy, I mean, there's nobody, I've never met anybody like him. He's, he's a unique character. He's amazing. Yeah. But he's the single worst typer I've <laughs> ever met in my entire life. And I don't know, like, I know it's obviously English is not his first language, but he must have the tiniest fucking keyboard in the world <laughs> because all of the words look like 
gibberish. Yeah, like, you, you can't decipher what he's unreal. trying to say. And he's it's got amazing. some good points sometimes, but it takes yeah. you 45 minutes to figure out what he's trying to say. Yeah, but honestly, yeah. now nah, this guy, thank you. Thank you for Cena for being in my life. Yeah, Cena will love you. Keep yeah. keep doing the shit Appreciate you do. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I like Cena. But you're in a tight battle with him for for this year. Yeah. Actually, I am too. He's ahead of me right now. Is he? Yeah, one point ahead of me. What? Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Now pride is on I've the crashed. line. I've crashed hard. Yeah. Shame yeah. on you. KD. KD's coming back. He's gonna save my season. Totally. <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah, hoping. Sure. I'm hoping. Sure, he's um, coming back. Yeah, <clears throat> are you this engaged in your fantasy in your NFL fantasy oh, yeah, league as well? Definitely, you are. And I'm I'm you in that league. So I'm the commissioner. So I have to. Mm. I have to also, the thing is, I'm I'm super into that one because it's my. I want to keep everybody engaged as well. I want to make yeah. it fun. Yeah, so, of course. You know, we do fun drafts, and you know, I do a, like a. Uh, like a, a roundup of the week's performances because it's that, yeah. that's head to head, so it's always fun. Like it's always a bit of banter and a bit of like yeah. smack talk, and yeah. it's good fun. So, um, so when was the last time you saw your kids? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Do my you daughter's have time eight. For all of this? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, no is the honest <laughs> answer. <laughs> but you know, I mean, like every parent knows the the most important time of your life when you have kids is the toilet breaks where you can yeah. actually like lock the door. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely do that. Lock myself in the toilet for a while and like look through which Houston rocket players got the most steals this year or like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's all right. It's quite, for me, it's quite relaxing to look at statistics and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So it's fun. Yeah, it is. And, most of the time we're sitting and watching some terrible series on Netflix, like yeah. to wind down. So yeah. my mind definitely wanders and that's why I do most of my research. To me, to me, um, like I'm not playing basketball, uh, competitive basketball anymore. I mm. didn't for, for, for a bunch. I grew up playing competitive basketball and then, then, you know, injuries and, and all that stuff. Uh, so that like competitiveness, yeah. It just transferred to exactly fan, the same. And, and that's the fun part. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, you want to win. Fantasy basketball is fun, right? But, but what's really fun about this league is we have ten people who just yeah shit on each other <laughs> and want to win and don't want to give anyone else credit right. when when they they've, they've earned it. And it's just that competition that you kind of need yeah. if if you're a competitive minded person. I agree, and, and like it's fun to also just yeah, like you know, like destroy people verbally <laughs> <laughs> in a way like yeah. like david for example who's yeah. a doctor and probably doing great things yeah but that doesn't mean anything in our league because <laughs> yeah yeah totally totally <laughs> it's probably some great people i've never met them i wouldn't know no but um they're all right the competitive spirit comes out and that's oh, yeah. it but oh, it's yeah. good fun it's good fun i just think like Cena, I can't lose to Cena. That would hurt. Yeah. No, we he's never quitting. Oh, is he not? No, no, no. Okay. We, we've talked about this. Like Shit. Cena and I, we're gonna be in this league. Oh, oh, you mean lose to him? Oh, I thought oh, you yeah, meant no, like lose him from him. from the no, league. No, oh, no, 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 no. You can't lose to Cena though. Oh, no. His his team is decent. I oh, know. Uh, I don't want to. Mind you, like my biggest for, for some reason, I've become like mortal enemies with David. Yeah. I've never met the dude. <laughs> Probably a lovely guy. Like I say, he's a doctor saving lives. The amount of shit I've given him over the years yeah. about being a fake doctor <laughs> and like all sorts of stuff. Like, honestly, it's if hilarious. I met this guy, I, I don't know if I could look him in the eye, the amount of shit I've said to him. <laughs> but if you're out there, David, I still hate you. <laughs> but, 100%. Yeah. Um, no, it's fun. No, but I was going to say, I talked to Cena about this. Like, we're not going to stop playing this until you know we're or, or until we're i thought you were gonna say until we have children uh, no 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 no, no way me, you no. you have two two kids you're, you're, you're in this no no that the priorities man uh but until we're dead or you know too sick yeah. closing in on death <laughs> so we can't play so we we just did the quick calculation like that's gonna be you know we, we've done this for 11 this is season 11 yeah you know, hopefully we have another good touch wood. 50, 50 years left. Yeah. 
<laughs> like what That's is our insane. what is our record gonna be oh you know my God, yeah <laughs> we're already like when when someone has two championships now yeah. that's big that's big because you know, it's so competitive it's it so changes competitive. every it's year hard. it's yeah. hard and no one has two championships so it's it's <laughs> it's, it's uh <laughs> it's very interesting but like you know 60 seasons in what yeah. is it gonna be like ah oh, you only have 15 championships <laughs> it's, it's gonna be crazy yeah then i can't like show off about coming fourth place every year yeah if we do this for 60 years <laughs> you're still like consistency i'm in the top four every year that's going to be an embarrassment oh, it's no. already you know you've been in the league this is your ninth year is it yeah oh wow yeah and i've never won well the, the fun thing is i i'm the i'm the cashier for this league you are so one year I'm just gonna convince everyone to up the stakes. Once I've all got, I've got your trust. <laughs> yeah. Like, why don't we just like add a zero onto that? Yeah. Like, just go big, and then I'm just gonna fuck off. Yeah. Disappear. It's amazing. What a, what a great plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's shit, it's, it's probably the most money uh, you're gonna. Oh yeah, kids. Uh, I gotta take them with me. <laughs> yeah. Louis C.K. has this great joke about. Uh, you're wow, you, you're brave. You're bringing up Kanye and Louis C.K. on the same podcast. Hey, man, <laughs> people are gonna be people are gonna do people things. <laughs> Living on the edge. I'm I'm sure I've said enough <laughs> shit for for someone to feel like I should be canceled at this point. It's been it's been four. This is the fourth episode. Probably you, you've been some, pretty good. Have I'm, I? Yeah. I'm, well, I'm, thank I'm you. Impressed. Thank you. I'm sure someone out there feels very offended by something I've said. Yeah. So you know. It, it, it is what it is. We'll see. Anyways, Louis C.K. <laughs> yeah, this Speak great, of the devil. Great, great yeah. joke. You, you mentioned like checking stats in the toilet. Yeah. Uh, he says the best. He, he, he does a bunch of jokes about, you know, having kids and, and yeah. that life. He says his favorite moment uh, of the day is when they're going somewhere and he has put all the kids in the car and he closes the door and takes that walk around the car to the driver's seat. Like those <laughs> 10 seconds when everyone is in the car so he Insula can't hear sound them. Sound insulation, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I savor that moment, walk slowly around the car, like, ah. Yeah, I wonder That's how hilarious. many fights couples have had over the years, like couples with kids, where one, par one partner has mysteriously disappeared and they're on the toilet but they're not on the toilet like mm. they're just in the toilet yeah. i know definitely me and my wife had the same time. thing yeah it's like yeah. oh we're getting ready to go yeah i'm just gonna go to the bathroom <laughs> and then mysteriously come back when all the kids are ready and my wife is pissed off oh, man. yeah you're sitting there like is yoshi's gonna accept the trade or right, not exactly man i um i saved your ass with what you sent me a trade this year yeah you said that, that was not good what i don't even remember it i yeah, must have been like sleep deprived me, or something uh, jalen brunson and uh a big guy i think okay see uh, i have no for, recollection for, of for two for, yeah it, it was i think it was my son i think he was you know <laughs> he was playing pokemon Probably. go on the phone and then yeah, he switched and, to them. and that's that's. I just want to say that's how much I, uh, what a good friend I am. Appreciate I it, didn't man. accept the trade. I told you like this is it's not gonna work. <laughs> you have to you have to rethink this. I appreciate that because because yeah. I'm far too competitive yeah. to ever be able to live that down. Yeah, if that did actually go through. Yeah, yeah, so, that would have been rough. Yeah, <laughs> man, fantasy league is fun. It's fun. Um, what else is going on? I mean, not a lot. No. Like I, I, <laughs> <laughs> there's fantasy NBA, fantasy right. NFL, two yeah, I mean, kids. Yeah, I got, I got oh, kids. Uh, what else do I do? Not a lot. Yeah. No, I mean, actually, it's funny because this year is this is the first time in my life where I haven't been working for the first two months of this mm. year. Right, and it's it's been weirdly awesome. Yeah, and it's just been like for the first time in a long time, just able to decompress yeah, and just kind of just be, yeah. um, be creative, try new things, but also spend time with my kids, spend time with my family. So yeah, right now this is probably the worst time to have a podcast with me on because I, I don't do anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that's great, and I'm and I'm but, totally at peace with that. It's the only time where I can uh, get right, you to true. sit down with me this much. <laughs> exactly. So. <laughs> it's the only time I'm in one country for long enough. No, but it's um, it's it's good. Dude, those breaks are so necessary. It's unreal. Like and if, if you can afford it, like taking right. a two three month break where you just don't do anything or or just do yeah. creative fun stuff. Right. Uh, it's so good for you it's been the most fulfilling sort of month and a half to two months of my yeah. life like it's been it's been crazy and um yeah again super privileged to be in this position where i can or i have you know been able to yeah be off and not have to jump onto the next project straight away um saying that i probably will start a new project soon but yeah. um it's been amazing and um yeah just time to sort of reflect because it's been i don't think i don't think i've realized how crazy the last few years have been yeah i mean we talk about the pandemic but you know like just everything that's happened in the world like 2022 was an absolute shit show yeah. like <laughs> like it was terrible for 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 everything that's happening in the world and yeah. and, and you know you get you get almost numb to that sometimes, but then the flip side is that is it just it you, you don't have time to reflect on the good things. Mm -hmm. And the last few months have just been like, okay, trying to stay, you know, be positive as much as possible, which yeah. you know, I, I'm definitely a a realist, <laughs> I like to call it. My wife says pessimist, but I like to call it a realist. But it's been nice. Like I like the other day, I went outside and went for a walk. Mm -hmm. That's never happened before. Like nice. <laughs> I've just like, gone for a walk by myself. Listening so, to Yoshi's podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. I was, uh -huh. no, I was listening to just, just, I, I didn't even have headphones. I was just Ooh, listening. Yeah. Wow. It was, it was crazy. And honestly, yeah. I'm 35 years old. I've never gone for a walk by myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now I kind of see what all the fuss is about. It was nice. Nice. Yeah. It's great. I, I recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> Going for walks. Yeah, exactly. It's oh, good. So a tip of the day. Um, yeah, all that kind of stuff, like like you mentioned, 2022 was crazy. Mm -hmm. Like even if, you know, we're very fortunate to be where we are in, in you know, this yeah. country and we haven't experienced some of the worst. We talked about that through the pandemic and obviously all the wars and all that stuff. We're mm -hmm. very, very fortunate in that regard. But it just takes a toll that you don't even notice when when you're working hard yeah. and you're fed with so much like fear porn. Right. Especially with the pandemic when it was like it's crazy. You know, the death toll. Right. Every day, you know, is mad. This many people died, this many people infected. Yeah. It, it takes a toll. There's like a point, I think it was something at one point where they had almost had like a ticker. Yeah, going off like tick, yeah. tick, tick, like every every. How morbid is that? This is horrific. Just imagine if we did that for anything else, right. like that, cancer. Exactly. Like yeah. every day, like oh, two hundred people died of cancer today. Yeah, that's it's like, a Jesus low Christ! Right. What are we doing? Like, yeah. wh why? But it's this information overload that's absolutely maddening, and you know, I, as a like uh, from a human standpoint, I, I I want to know what's happening. You know, yeah. I have a thirst for knowledge, but also a bit of a, a bit of FOMO as well, fear of missing out, fear of missing something. Mm -hmm. So I absorb information. Um, I, I like to read. I like to listen, know what's happening in the world and the news. Yeah. A year ago, I stopped reading the news. Yeah, best decision I've ever made. Because I mean, <laughs> the important stuff you'll hear. Yeah. through friends, family, spouses, or through the little bits that trickle through somewhere where you're going to be exposed to it. Yeah. But before that, I was an avid reader. You know, I would I would have four different newspapers open yeah. up on my desktop, um, you know, one screen while I was working on another screen. And I'd be, especially during the pandemic, because that affected my job quite a yeah. lot. I was figuring out what was going on. And just the, you, you, you get to a point where you realize that, my God, like there's only so much... <laughs> bad news you can absorb yeah. without it affecting you psychologically for sure so a year ago i was like all right i'm stop stopping stopping the news i'm done and done with reading you're the news. still yeah off of it yeah mm. yeah i read so i read uh the sports news mm -hmm. on one website uh because i know that i can go there without being into the main news yeah. program yeah. and you know, that's it. I, I, I read the sports news through like athletic and like yeah. other apps like that, but I don't read mainstream newspapers because it's just, it's just it's depressing. <laughs> it's just I mean, depressing. we didn't evolve to know what's going on 
everywhere. all around the world. Right. Exactly. I mean, there's always some shit going down somewhere. Always. And if you know about all of it all the time, it's too much. It's not manageable. I Especially mean, if you're an empathetic person. I'm an empathetic person. I other how other people feel affects yeah, me. You yeah. know, if I'm in a room with someone who's really sad, I I, I will know that, and I'll want to spend time with them and help them or speak to them. them. No, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> only if it's basketball related. No, <laughs> no, but um, no. So like, I, I feed off that energy and. Yeah, it it affects my mood, um, and sitting there just like being fed all the bad things that are happening in the world. Yeah, I mean it has a massive effect. Uh, one of the most popular newspapers in the UK is called the Daily Mail, mm -hmm. right? And I challenge you to read that newspaper without losing faith in humanity. <laughs> like honestly, every that, that single out. day. Yeah. They would they would come up with it would be a new story about something or they'd have yeah. like a morbid twist on something else yeah. or oh this person went to the doctors to and because they thought they had as um, indigestion and turned out they had cancer now they're dead oh great cool yeah. I, like I I get these horrible things are happening in the world I'm not I'm not <laughs> I'm not mentally ready to be dealing with everybody's problems yeah. like nobody is yeah. but it, there's such an overload of information that you kind of you can easily get swept away in it. And I mm -hmm. think a lot of the, the psychological difficulties during the pandemic that people had in my circle, in my friendship groups and stuff like that were because of this, you know, they were reading yeah. the news all the time. Oh, the, we're all going to die. That's yeah. what you were told pretty much. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so <laughs> I made that change been much happier. I, it's, it's crazy how just that small difference made a big difference in my life. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not saying like everyone should get off the news because some of it's important to know. I mean, yeah. I'm not, I don't want to preach ignorance because you have to be able to deal with the bad stuff that's happening as well, yeah. but there's too much of it. There's too, there's too much information. Taking a break can be healthy. It's healthy. Yeah. It's healthy. I used to be, um, I'm the same. I'm very interested in, in, yeah. in stuff. And for me, it used to go in waves. Like I would consume mm. everything for, I don't know. Uh, half a year, three months, whatever. Right. And then I would feel like, all right, too much. And I would just get off of all of it for yeah. a few weeks. And then I'm like, ah, I wonder what's going on. And I, right. I get back right. to it. But actually, this is going to sound weird, but uh, the last few years, especially the last like year or so, mm. I become far more optimistic. Yeah. I've become far more optimistic about the world and uh, and about where we're headed. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to contradict myself now because because <laughs> I think there's clearly a lot of signs that we're going in a, in a bad direction. Right. But what I what I mean is the pandemic exposed how full of shit a lot of world leaders yep. are, and enough people saw that something's not right here mm. enough people saw that something's not right here that enough people are now saying hold on what's actually going on and hold on we're not just going to take your word for for right. this we'll do our so, so trust in like you know m what's called mainstream media but it's mm. no longer mainstream like corporate yeah. corporate media institutional media <laughs> whatever you want to call it right. trust in in those organizations has plummeted yeah and something else is going to be built in its absence because people are always going to be want to be in the know right. and what's going to succeed is uh honest people who build trust mm. i think i talked to someone i think i talked to asim about this on the podcast but like <clears throat> someone who's uh, consistently honest like might mess things up yeah but says but oh i, I messed thing. this up those are the kind of people who everyone wants to right. listen to because you know you don't if you if you understand that a network for instance has been feeding you lies right. and never apologize for any of the lies you're just not going to listen to them right. anymore just, trust trust is something it takes a long time to build but you can crash you it can in a crash day it in an instant and that's the thing like i think that's the the key is the key is being humble enough to admit you don't know it all like, yeah. and 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 by doing that, it's also important to realize that <laughs> nobody else knows it all. Yeah. So 
we we often and it's interesting moving from the celebrity conversation earlier about being starstruck with celebrities it it, it just like me and you they're the same they're just normal people they make mistakes yeah. like yeah. and yeah they have a platform and they need to be careful and stuff like this but People are gonna fuck up. I mean, like yeah. Kanye was everyone's favorite not so long ago, and then now <laughs> yeah. he's well. I mean, well, he's he's he, kind of done and said stupid yeah, shit. Yeah, he has. But like, I mean, but, exactly. But he took, but, it, to he took it to a new level, yeah. right? And but people are are human, and there is that human aspect. Um, and we're going through like a transition where we've expected these everybody to be perfect, mm -hmm. and we're starting to see that nobody is quite clearly. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the most important things and one of the things I'm trying to teach my kids, and this is going to be strange because I only know how to say this in Swedish and not English, um, to be, to be, um, shell kritisk, mm -hmm. like source critical. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wow. I've been out of England so long. Um, so critic like critically look at the source yeah. and question it Yeah, because that's the number one skill that kids are going to need in the future. Oh yeah. Because the information is there. Yeah. everything's there but yeah you can make not everything's true you can pretty much make any point you want you can make any point you want. and point to what, what looks like good sources exactly uh, exactly yeah. no that, that's 100%. where that's where what i was talking about earlier comes in you're gonna see the there's it's it's no coincidence that podcasters are uh, becoming more popular because people who are doing it over time and consistently like admitting mm. when they were wrong right. and, and, you know, messing up and, and open about their biases because everyone has them. Yes. 100%. Uh, someone might be, you know, left wing, right wing, whatever it may be, but they're open about it and they call out, you know, their, their own in right. quotations, their own people, like anyone, if, if someone is left wing and they call out the left, left wing people when they mess up, right. That's the kind of people who are going to build trust mm. and, um, that's why like long format podcasts are so good because you can't, it's much harder to hide your biases and it's 100%. much harder to lie when you're sitting like this and having a conversation I mean, for three hours, shit. like where you, where you don't even know where the conversation is going to go. Right. I mean, yeah. everyone can look great on TikTok. Yeah. Like everyone, if you do a 15 second clip of, I don't know. Hitler, I'm sure he would come across all right, <laughs> but you do a three-hour interview with him, probably going to come across a little bit of his yeah. uh, his biases. But yeah. it's it's these it's a short video format that creates an illusion that everybody's perfect and yeah. nobody's fucking perfect. Yeah. Hell, I made loads of mistakes in my life, yeah. huge amount of mistakes. Um, but you have to kind of learn from them and actually just do better and yeah. move on. And it's the people that don't make that growth or make that change that they're the people that I'm most wary of mm -hmm. because I mean, you know, if you clearly fuck up, I mean, just, you gotta just put your hands up and accept it Yeah, because, and then learn from it and then don't do it again. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's the repetitive behavior. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And, and you don't really have a view into that when it comes to media because media becomes an entity and not a person and how do you trust an entity with multiple people who you don't know yeah. versus building trust with one person yeah I don't. yeah it's tough it's tough i mean i don't envy the cnn's the fox news no. the, it's a it's a weird situation to be in especially with how available information is nowadays yeah and people are smart like yeah. people are fucking smart it's, yeah. it's crazy um you know it's and there's everything is there at our fingertips so yeah. it's just a matter of time before someone calls you on your bullshit that's that's another thing you you mentioned like we were talking about stars with uh social media mm -hmm. you know everyone everywhere that has an internet connection and a phone has the potential of becoming a star. Yeah. Everybody has a voice. Yeah. yeah. And that has, uh, that has changed how we, we view stars. Mm. Yeah. Uh, because if everyone can be a star, then, you know, what's special about Hollywood stars? Right. Nothing. Yeah. They're just like anyone else. Yeah. They just got discovered, you know, in that era. Yeah. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. I lost my, I lost, I lost the thought process now. What, what were well, we, 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 we kind of went out of our range. I yeah. Think. <laughs> <laughs> so true. I think, 
I think we we went super political. Uh, uh, it, was, it was starting to get difficult to keep track of where we were. Right, I'm with you. All right, let's uh, let's get back down to earth. Um, so uh, I remember you were telling me a story about um, your time in Ireland. Yes. Um, it's a weird and wonderful place. It's a weird and wonderful place. You, I remember you were something like uh, 19. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. Want, you want to tell that story? What happened in Ireland? Oh, so actually, Ireland, so I was 19. Um, and I left home for the first time. And it was like, it was a big deal. I was with a girlfriend at the time who who just got a job in Ireland. She was like, oh, I think I can get you a job there too. I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. So we moved over to Ireland and I, I, I grew up in like a, a small ish town mm-hmm. in, in England. So I kind of, you know, knew everybody. It was, yeah, it was, it was safe. It was a great place to, to be during those years. Um, we moved to Ireland where they hate English people. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Um, no, but there's definitely a little bit of a, a rivalry, a friendly a rivalry of between, oh, yeah, a little bit of tension between the Irish and the English. And, um, we moved to the West coast of Ireland in the middle of nowhere in the small sort of, um, it was like a, it was like a tourist town. It was pretty mm-hmm. much alive and bustling during the summer and then everything closed and everybody shut down during the winter and then it was a seasonal. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it was a beautiful place, still one of the most beautiful places I've ever been and some some of the most incredible people I've ever met were there. But I had like probably one of the more <laughs> grounding moments in my entire life <laughs> when I was there. So um like I say, 19 year old Andy, very different person. Um, <laughs> uh, we were at a, a nightclub like for the first time and in, in Ireland, my friend yeah. had come over from, from England and this uh, was the first night out in Ireland, literally the first night out. Okay. So my mate came over with his girlfriend and I was there with my girlfriend. Four of us went out, went to a bar, had some drinks, had a great time, went to a club and started, you know, dancing, having fun. And one guy starts, you know, dancing with my girlfriend and, and being a little bit um, too hands-on, she was yeah. getting a bit annoyed. So a I, bit frisky. Yeah, so I stepped in and was like, okay, leave her alone. Like, yeah, fuck off, basically. And I remember him looking at me and just like laughing at me, like right in my face. And I was like, dude, you're like 5'5". Five, five. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 6'5". <six, five>. Like, <laughs> this is, this is going to be, this, you know, and I was, you know, quite an arrogant little 19 year old boy at that point. So I was like, I'm ready. You know? I like how you, you've grown an inch uh, massive, over yeah. the past hour oh, since, since we last <laughs> talked about this. It's nice. incredible, right? <laughs> yeah. Or maybe, maybe you were 6'5 then and you shrunk heels. to 6'4 yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So you tell him to fuck off. So I grew an inch and then, I, you know, I was, uh, I was getting a little bit, you know, I was being, um, I was making it pretty clear that I wasn't happy. Let's put it this way. Yeah. <laughs> and he was just looking back at me laughing. And I was thinking, what the fuck? What yeah. the fuck is going on? Next thing I know, the bouncers like grab me, drag me out the back door. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Okay. Um, and as they're dragging me out, I'm like, guys, no, look, trying to explain myself. Hey, look, uh, we're new here. We just moved here. This is the first night out. That guy was doing this, this, and this. I was just telling him to fuck off. I wasn't going to do anything, blah, blah, blah. And I started to reason with these bouncers and they were like, okay, all right, we get it. They were like, you can go back in and find your mates. I was like, cool. So they let me back in the same door they dragged me out of. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> now in this time, my mate and uh, his girlfriend and my girlfriend had left. They were look, walking around looking for me. They were trying to find me out. Yeah. Some some dark alley down the road somewhere. Um, so I came back in and I remember seeing uh the dance floor and i looked left and as i look right that's it no more memory no more recollection blackout i woke up two days later in my own bed somehow with half my face like hanging off like i was i had the living shit kicked out of me my face was hanging off and you know i got like a chip bone in my eye socket i broke my nose i had a concussion everything and it was it was wild um and I was so confused because I was, I had no idea what had happened. No idea at all. So yeah, this all, this all, I'm, I'm trying to process this. I'm like, first of all, like, why didn't you take me to a fucking hospital, man? Yeah. <laughs> no, but it was good. I was, uh, I was alive. Um, took me a while to recover. 
Um, and then, um, I eventually went back to this club and I was like, guys, look, I was assaulted, blah, blah, blah. I'm just wondering if you have any video footage because I need to know what the fuck happened. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Come in, we'll find it. And they wound it back to the night. They played it back. And I was like, and I see myself walking in like in the corner, the back corner. So you can see it super clearly. And then one guy bottles me like over the side of my head and then a couple of other people just start like stamping on me and kicking me i was like whoa that looks brutal that's why i can't remember anything and i was like i was like oh okay so i was like oh thanks guys i appreciate this hey look is there any way i can get a copy of that you know i'm thinking about going to the police and they were like nah you're banned from this establishment oh don't ever come here again oh fuck off i was like uh what what did i do yeah exactly i was like what the fuck i was like why they were like (laughs) they basically told me um uh i found out like later on they told me to fuck off and get lost i found out later on that that was uh like the local rugby team had that as their establishment and their dad owned the one of their dads owned that bar and they were like Mm -hmm. yeah i don't know but anyway i wasn't welcome there anymore let's put it put it that way so yeah so that was my first sort of real interaction with first sort of real understanding um and this is actually weirdly enough probably one of the best things happened to me i i was not a nice kid at 19 Mm. i mean i was i was a I, I wasn't a bad person, but I wasn't, I was an arrogant douchebag. 19. Yeah. I was a douchebag. Yeah. I was an arrogant 19 year old boy who just thought he was all that in a bag of chips. Yeah. And you know, that was a turning moment in my life where I realized, Ooh, okay. I'm not the biggest, baddest and toughest person. Yeah. And I probably should be a little bit more respectful when I talk to people. And it changed so much mm-hmm. of how I am today. Um, so yeah, I think it was one of the better things that happened to me in a Crazy. weird way. I think, and this is going to sound like a really weird comment. I'm going to say it anyway. I think quite a lot of people would need that sometimes. A good beating. A good. Wow. Well, okay, that sounds harsh. I sound like a <laughs> bad person, but it it helped Everyone me so needs much. A humbling moment. A humbling moment. That's yeah. a great. Doesn't See, doesn't have to be a beating. It doesn't have to be Just a physical beating because I don't wish that on anyone. Yeah. But you have to humble yourself. Yeah. And that was my humbling moment where I was like, okay, I need to reevaluate how I interact with people, how I carry myself and, and, and what I, what I do with my life, because that was not a path that I wanted to go down. That wasn't fun. I don't, I yeah. don't wish that on anyone, but kind yeah, of very uh, happy to be alive though. Yeah, like, definitely. That, and like, you def- could have, you could have taken a, a smaller dose of humbling. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like a, just like a backhand. Like, <laughs> and then that's it. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. But, um, no, it was weird. It was, it was, a, it was a changing experience. Yeah. yeah. And I think since then, uh, I've definitely become a better human, which is yeah. odd, yeah. but, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, that's a, that's a good lesson to take out of it because not everyone would, I, I'm sure some people would, you know, become more angry. Potentially. But what I, th- like what that. I think by this as well is that, and this is again, going back to social media and the fact that everything is documented nowadays. Yeah. I don't, I don't, as a 19 year old kid, i I probably said a lot of stupid things. I'm sure everyone we, of us did. <laughs> like, especially that night. Um, um, but no, I think, I think a lot of people say stupid things, but people grow and they change and they develop and yeah. they learn. And it's very difficult. You know, there's all this stuff of people big in, bringing up like old tweets of yeah. people. Yeah. And okay, some of it is irrefutable. Like you can't yeah. say that shit. But some of it is like, you know, yeah, I these mean, are young kids or young teenagers or early twenties saying dumb shit. Like, yeah, right. that's, that's what part you of do. growing up. That's what you do because you're not fully developed. Yeah. So, and yeah, you should I, definitely get called out on it for sure. Yeah, but that's the humbling moment. Exactly. Exactly. That's you, the humbling moment. But you moment. can't be, you know, 30 and people go digging up your tweets from when you were 18 yeah. and be like, you're fired. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's like, tough. It's like, I'm not dude, that person. That was a while ago right <laughs> exactly like you compare me today to me ni- at 19 is yeah. two different people yeah for sure it has to be it has to be it, otherwise it can't I'm... be any other way right. I, that, that's what i was uh, we were talking about uh, with asim because because yeah. he had this dumbass goal that he that he mm. uh, yeah the lambo yeah the lambo 
And, and it's like, we talked about it, like, you're born, you're zero years, you, yeah. you are nothing in terms of like personality development. And at 30, you're hopefully a decent person and, yeah. uh, and, you know, have a job and providing for you and your family and everything in between is a spectrum. Right. You don't like suddenly turn 18 and like, oh, now I'm a, a, an adult. <laughs> now I get it. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Like you have to have that. And, and humbling moments is what shapes you. <laughs> like, right. that's, that's why I really love sports. Like you, mm. youth sports. Yeah. Cause you get humbled a lot. Yeah, that's true. A lot. Like you, you lose games, you have, you know, shitty referees, you, you get in an argument with someone, both opponents and teammates, yeah. all of this stuff, you learn where the lines are yeah. and hopefully you take the right lessons out of it and, yeah. you know, become a better person. I'm a massive believer in, in team sports oh, yeah. in terms of, in terms of character development, but also, you know, both my kids play football. My, mm -hmm. uh, I coach my daughter's team. Oh, nice. it's, it's a hell of a lot of fun yeah. and they're awesome, but it's such an important lesson for them to learn how to win as a team, lose, learn yeah. from it, move on, you know, um, and, and it, the growth that I've seen just in my own daughter, let alone the rest of the girls is, is, is been unreal. Like yeah. from learning how teams work and how to yeah. sort of, um, coexist in, yeah. in, in, in any space, you get so much of that from team sport, I think is vital. Yeah. Um, you know, I, there's a lot of great sports out there. I mean, football just happens to be the medium that we're using, but it's, it's brilliant and it's so much fun as well. Yeah, for sure. I miss it. No, but every, every kid is the center of the universe mm. when they're born because yeah. that's how parents treat their kid and that's, right. that's all they know. And then you have to, you know, get checked. <laughs> Hopefully, in a, Hopefully in a less good, violently in than a I good, was. Safe yeah. way. Yeah, exactly. Uh, doesn't have to be physical. It no, can exactly. Just you know, you lose a few games. You you get tossed for. I got so many technical fouls when I was playing basketball. And that's when I was so a kid. weird. I can't imagine you getting technical fouls. I mean, are you like the one of the calmest people I know? Yeah. Now. Yeah. Exactly. I wasn't that wild as a kid either, but. On the basketball court, I just I just couldn't handle it when I felt like the referees were wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. I just yeah. had a temper. So yeah, that's that's a that's a check. That's a humbling <laughs> moment to get tossed from games because right. of technical fouls. I mean, that's <laughs> stupid. Right, <laughs> just stupid. <laughs> right. Just don't do it. <laughs> yeah, or you could be Demarcus Cousins and never learn from it. <laughs> like, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. There, there's adults who never, and that, that that's the that's... deal breaker for me. I mean, you can be, I mean, everyone's done dumb shit in their yeah. lives. If you don't learn from that, you know, that's where I lose a little bit of respect. Like, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I won't hold things against people unless they're uh, you know, ir uh, irreprehensible. Wow, I'm losing my English, um, but. Uh, if people do something stupid and then just repeat that same mistake, then yeah. that's when you start to lose the respect. But I mean, I think, um, you know, there needs to be a bit of leniency, especially with the younger generation, like this generation that's coming up now, their whole lives are on the internet. Yeah. I wonder how many careers are going to be ruined. Hopefully not. Hopefully we've gone sort of full circle with this. But yeah. I think we have. I hope I, so. I because think, I think it's only going to be better because this was so, brand new yeah. Like yeah true the internet social media it's such a powerful tool that we had never seen before yeah. and we're still figuring it out like yeah. as a as a civilization we're still figuring out like what is, what is all this and i believe the kids that grow up having that from birth mm. are going to be way better than we were yeah at it's going to be interesting it isn't it yeah it is it is for sure can't wait yeah it's going to be um I think we talked about this before, like in f hopefully soon, but in like 50 years, hopefully sooner than that, <laughs> people are going to look back in this, at this and go, what you gave, you gave children access to social media. <laughs> right? Like, are you insane? <laughs> like they're, they're going to look at this. Like we yeah. look at smoking, you know, right. 
like when families were smoking in, in, yeah, exactly. in their homes and kids were smoking at like 12. I mean, shit, when we're going to look at, right. at pe people are going to look at social media. Like we look at that, like geez, these guys, these, these people were barbarians. Right. That's the thing. <laughs> when, when I was a kid in South Africa and we had like brides and like barbecues and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I would, I apparently, I don't remember this, would go around and like ask for a sip of everyone's beer oh. as a kid. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, sure. Look, and you were look how cute he is. Eight or younger. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, it explains a few things, I suppose, <laughs> but <laughs> thought I'd get in there before that's, you did. <laughs> that's where you should have gotten the humbling moment <laughs> before right. like indulging a little bit too right, much. Exactly. All right. So, but yeah, I, I, I hope that's, uh, that's the path we're on. We're, we're going to be looking at this like, Jesus, that was crazy. Yeah. We're, we're going to be much more responsible with it. Yeah. There's obviously a path where we go in the opposite direction Absolutely. where everything just goes full TikTok, <laughs> which, you then know, we're, then we're screwed. that's dystopia, but yeah. I'm, I'm an optimist. I think we're going to start figuring it out. I like it. I, I think I can't, I can't remember this now, but like when, when the printing press was invented, yeah. uh, I mean, there was like madness. There were wars, yeah. a ton of wars yeah. and, um, people were like, you know, very upset about, uh, misinformation and, yeah. and how f information spreads too fast. Mm. So what are we going to do now when there are all these books being printed that, that are like about witches and, right. and stuff like, like, like proper dangerous misinformation, yeah. if you want to call it that. And, and we figured it out. It took a few, you know, <laughs> wars. <laughs> Took a few years, but now no one has an issue with books, or yeah, you know, some people do. Right. But but uh, uh, we've kind of figured out books. Yeah, we're gonna get to that point with the internet as well. Yeah, it, it's gonna get messy until we figure it out. For but, sure. Um, that made me think of this other thing. Have you ever heard of the Wicked Bible? No. It's such a funny little anecdote. Somewhere, somewhere in England, I think it was. Um, they printed a Bible where there was a typo in one of the 10 commandments. Uh, -huh. uh, the one about, um, I, I don't remember what the biblical term is, but yeah. about you should not cheat on your spouse. Okay. Um, instead of you shall, shall not, it just said you shall. Oh, what? Yeah. So they printed like, you know, X amount of Bibles that were <laughs> one of the 10 commandments was, was you should cheat on your wife. <laughs> or your spouse and you know this is the bible <laughs> people people take the bible seriously so for like a brief period in like this area of england like it was it was crazy like what? people thought that that's what you should do <laughs> so they had to like find all of these bibles and like discard them and print new versions because it oh, just created Jesus. chaos let's say misinformation is dangerous I guess it is. I guess it is. Yeah. Check your sources, people. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's a tricky one. It's like don't use one. this podcast I, for, <laughs> for any sort of reference point. <laughs> I, I struggle with that because I'm, I'm very much of the mind that, you know, information should be free mm. and censorship should not be a thing. This is such an interesting conversation because I contradict yeah. myself so much along this it's topic. Hard. It's, it's, yeah, it's a very difficult. Yeah, because I'm the same as you. Obviously, like, it, let's take a, a social media network. Yeah. Obviously, anything that's illegal, like, you know, child pornography or, right. or doxing people, yeah. get it off. Yes. But opinions, views. And it's tough. Where do you draw the line? It's, because then it's you, hard. Because it's then hard. you say, like, cause I'm, I'm, I've had conversations with people where I'm like, yeah, I believe in free speech. And then someone's going, no, what about if this person says this? I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Like, okay, but, but what about free speech? I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck, you got me. Because, I mean, and one of the th things where this became, like, very clear to me was was with Donald Trump. It's, mm -hmm. it's like the whole conversation about free speech. Yeah. Yeah, but when you're the president of a nation, you've got to be careful. But, okay, what – when do the rules come in? Like, yeah, <laughs> who's and, allowed and to who actually speak free? Them right. And it's like what, Elon on Musk what basis? With Twitter. Yeah. Right. He's going to open it up to everyone. Yeah. That's, that's dangerous as well because you've got, you've got people in positions of power. Yeah. But it's, it's so hard. Like, 
who decides where right. the line line is drawn. And that's the tricky part with these social media networks. Right. Like they have so much power. So much. And maybe that's a good thing because here's the thing about power. Like the only thing that checks power is other power. Mm -hmm. That's why we have the the separation of powers. That way you have, you know, the in, in the US, like the, the president, the Senate, right, the House right. and all that. Everyone has a certain area. So it's good that there's Th that's like what the media is supposed to do. The media mm. is supposed to check the politicians. Yeah. So in a sense, it's good that there are powerful media entities, but then who's going to check them? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? This is the thing. You and I are never going to figure this out. No, you think so? I, I, I feel like we're so close. <laughs> I feel like we're so far. <laughs> I feel like, you know, five more minutes and we have this shit figured out. <laughs> But this is one of the our generation's yes. toughest like yes. challenges is how do you promote free speech and give everyone a voice, especially marginalized communities and people in, you know, difficult situations or situations that aren't conducive to power or having power. You have to people have to have a voice. But how do you then also then check the people who are in a position of power yeah. so they make sure they're using their voice for the right thing. Like yeah. Kanye, I've, I mean, everyone's known for years that the, the guy, he needs help. Like yeah. he's, he's, he's clearly like, I don't know, maybe it's not for me to say, but I mean, he doesn't seem well, Yeah. but he's got this massive platform. Everything mm -hmm. he says to a large amount of people is gospel. Like he has yeah, and, so much power. And so many people make money off of, Right. His existence. Right, exactly. So it's a whole machinery. It's a, it's behind a whole him. machine. Yeah. Um and then but then, you know, and then how do you say to this person, No, you, you that's that's a wrong opinion, you can't have that opinion or yeah. don't talk about that because you might influence other people. Uh, it's it's hard. See what I mean? It's hard. We're I, never I, gonna solve this. <laughs> I, I'm uh, I'm of the mind that every opinion should be allowed. Mm. Because if oh, I could challenge you here, I'm not going to, but go. every opinion, as long as it's just an opinion, you know what I mean? And is what about an opinion on something that's clearly horrific or illegal? As long as it's an opinion, mm -hmm. it should be, it, it's hard it, yeah. because again, like uh, social media networks, they have a very difficult job. Yeah. I, I can't imagine being one of those people sitting there deciding what's fine and what's not. Yeah. What my point is, every opinion has to be fine. Otherwise, what we're doing is policing thought crimes. Yeah. If you hate uh, people of my ethnicity, mm. that's fine. You know, you can you can think everyone of my ethnicity needs to be murdered. That's fine. It's completely fine. Until you act on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. As soon as you cross the line from thinking something to acting it out, that's that's where the line has to be drawn. But what if someone who is in a position of power or influence yes. speaks about these things? That's the tricky part. Yeah, because that's, that that's where it gets that is great. The tricky because part. Let's, say, let's say I have 300,000 followers on Instagram yeah. and I decided that I hate people from former Yugoslavia. Yeah. If I say something, there's going to be one person in there that doesn't understand that's, that. That's uh, and that that, but, that but that's, that's the whole thing. That, with there, with, there are laws against instigating true crime. True. So I mean, clearly, the, we have already established that it's not. You you couldn't say to your three hundred thousand followers, "Go go murder Yoshi." No, that's illegal. But if you just say, "Man, I hate Yoshi," yeah, fine. And if one of those idiots comes out to to try to kill me then that's the person who needs to be punished. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. But then, okay, so let me take the scenario of the, the in, insurrection, the capital riots oh, in, in the US. Yeah, here Jesus we go. Christ, Andy, this is my last episode. You oh, know that, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going deep now, right? Go ahead, so, go ahead. So obviously Trump says a few things, mm -hmm. whips people up into a frenzy. Yeah. Technically doesn't say anything illegal. Yeah. People storm the capital. People lose their lives. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, what's your, what's your question? I, the question is, how, how? No, there is no question. The question is... <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, the question you just is like, want to set me up. I just want to. Stupid I just want to put home. you in a difficult position. No, I'm kidding. No, but um, but what I mean is like, and that's what I mean when I said at the beginning, we're never going to solve this because, and this is, in a weird way, kind of in, uh, indicative of the world that we live in now. There, there is a reason for everything. You can reason, and because there's so much information, sure. you can make. I mean, the reason right or wrong, you yeah. can reason for anything, but. Because I agree, I'm, I want people to be able to speak freely. That is, yeah. that is a human right, but <laughs> there shouldn't be a but afterwards. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But it's because we have the world is social media and all this yeah. and this ability, access to information and platforms that it becomes a question that we need to think about. And like I say, sure. I'm taking zero responsibility for this question. I'm okay. not... <laughs> I'm not well read enough or <laughs> ready to 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 have this conversation if I'm okay. perfectly honest. So I'm gonna jump off now. <laughs> so yeah, you take it away, Yoshi. No, it's it's a very it's a very tricky question. But that's that's why I think you have to have a principle that you believe in. Yeah. And just trust that things duke themselves out. Yeah. The but I, I agree with the optimism though. Yeah. And that if you'd asked me last year, I would have said no. And even though nothing's really got better, I think I've changed my mindset in terms of yeah. trying to see the positive side. I think stuff has gotten better. Yeah. I think that what I was saying before, um, the the uh, declining trust yeah. in institutions that have proven that they are not trustworthy mm. is a positive. It might seem like a negative because people are like, Shit, everyone is lying. Everything is crazy. Who can I trust? But that's an opportunity for people who value trust right. to, you know, step in and build trust instead of yeah. and also people to like be critical of their what they read and yes. and how they interpret things. Absolutely. Because that's the key. I there were so many things that I had never questioned in my life. Mm. I just took them for granted. Yeah. And because of some stuff that happened, you know, in the past few years, now I'm like, hmm, what about these other hmm. things? <laughs> and you start reading into some things and you're like, oh, shit, I, this thing that I just took for granted for, you know, 20 years yeah. is completely different. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. if, if, if millions of people are having that experience and finding out that, oh, some things are not, you know, what we, we've been sold. Yeah. That's that's a step in the right direction because yeah. the worst thing is it continues to be, um, you know, lying institutions continue to be trusted. Mm. That's the worst thing because then mm. you just you're, you're going to end up with totalitarianism. Yeah. I mean, you're going to end up with uh, 1984 by George Orwell. Oh, yeah, that's, exactly. that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I think it's very very positive that people have started looking at these authoritative sources mm. and going. But is it is it really though? Mm. And and you know, trying to trying to figure out the truth. And it's gonna be messy because you're gonna have charlatans who pretend to be right. you know, speaking truth and it's going to take a while to figure out who actually earns trust and who doesn't. But it's still better than continuing to trust people who have clearly had an agenda that's uh I would say not in line with what's good for the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, this is the beauty of these kind of conversations because you and I have have no academic background in this in any way, shape, or form, but you have a view and an opinion, yeah. and it's quite nice to talk about it. Yeah. But um, it's it's always. Uh, do you find yourself like almost on on not on edge, but like. Mm, about what I say, yeah. Um, not yet. No, not yet. I might need a humbling moment. <laughs> to, hey, I, to I be know some Irish managed. guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not on edge yet because I, I truly believe that. Like, I don't know. I don't even know if I believe what I'm, what I want to say, <laughs> but. I want to believe that like honest conversations mm. 
build trust. I am going to be, I will always strive to be the kind of person who apologizes when they mess up. Right. I have been for, for a long time. Like I, yeah. I don't struggle saying, I'm sorry, I was wrong. No, no, no. I don't struggle with that. I yeah, think same. it's a, it's a, it's a very important thing to do. Um, so I hopefully, you know, people listening to this podcast can see that mm. over the long run. Like yeah. I am in episode four. I, I haven't earned <laughs> any trust <laughs> yet. Uh, which is fine. You people, got my trust don't. by r- saying no to that trade that I sent you. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's just me setting you up for shitty trades right, ne- exactly. next year. <laughs> there you go. See. Trust no one. Um, no, but I, I, I strive to be that kind of person. Yeah. And, you know, those kind of people, um, they make it through even when people try to cut them down. Mm. Like Joe Rogan for for all his flaws and he has flaws he went through like they they tried to tear him down yeah very very strong established institutions tried to tear him down first over his you know views on covid and then oh, someone put together you know him saying the n word all this kind of stuff it was yeah. it was orchestrated attempts to uh to cut him down by very powerful institutions or at least what we perceive as powerful institutions, Mm -hmm. his following grew. Like he apologized for the N word stuff. He said, I was an idiot. I just thought, you know, what was funny or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the, the COVID stuff, he just explained like, this was, you know, I did this with a doctor and I didn't take horse dewormer and it was, it was medicine and his trust in him grew. His, his, his followers skyrocketed and, and people saw this is a real human being. So it's interesting with Joe Rogan because yeah. I don't listen to I don't listen to his podcast. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I know who he is and, and and bits and pieces about him. But someone was saying the other day that he's sort of like he's becoming like a cult, yeah. or like almost like a cult, not a cult leader. But you know, throughout history, we've followed leaders, sure, and um, you know, emperors and and presidents and generals and all this stuff over the years. And now, you know, there's so much <laughs> like the Royal family in the UK, no one follows them. Um, that's like a, almost like a sideshow now. So people need new people to follow and to, sure. to, to be thought leaders for them. So there's a huge amount of power there, huge sure. amount of power, because I mean, the influence that you have over people that trust you is, is, is massive. Um, and I think he's got to the point where, you know, it's almost, I mean, some people say football is like a religion um, mm-hmm. because you follow it and it absorbs you and you believe in it and it, it you know, it helps guide you in a, obviously not spiritually, but in terms of you know, it gives you your structure, time, it gives you structure, structure like also belonging. For sure. And community. I think, yeah, exactly. Community. Right. I mean, one. that's key because, and the reason and this is my uneducated opinion, why I think people like Joe Rogan are getting the following that they're getting is because of this feeling of belonging to a community Mm -hmm. because religion is on the decline, Mm -hmm. like in most countries. Um, People are, there's a lot more agnostics and atheists and stuff like this. And then at the same time, we're becoming more afraid of our neighbors Mm and people like that we live with, distrusting. So people are looking for this, community to belong to sure and it used to be found in religion then it was found in like the you know the 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 town or well yeah the ideology but also like the town you grew up in you know like you know when my parents grew up they grew up with they knew everybody in their town um and now you barely know your neighbor like in sweden you know the common joke about you know not knowing your neighbors and when you live in an apartment building um so there's such a thirst for belonging to a community that there is a rise of people like Joe Rogan who, yeah, who people in, enjoy listening to, and and they become like a, yeah, almost like a mini religion of people following them. I'm sure there's a lot of people who have an unhealthy relationship to Joe Rogan and mm-hmm. other, mm-hmm. you know, massive podcasters. Uh, yeah, but I don't see. Uh, it all depends on what you do with it. Okay, so I'm going to throw in something totally. 
different now because okay. um so i think a little bit linked to what i said earlier about being uh, critical of your source mm -hmm. and i think the way society is going um <laughs> the the school system is so not ready yeah. for this <laughs> it's yeah. unbelievable my wife's a teacher um and uh, she's amazing and she's you know teachers are brilliant they're like the former uh, formers of our formative years but the way the school system is set up is 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 to believe everything like mm -hmm. it's like this is how this works yeah don't question it like do this yeah. how to pass your test you do that okay maybe it's not anymore i'm a little bit out of touch uh, i haven't been in school for a while yeah. um but um you know it's going to be so important to teach kids to have their own opinions be critical of what they do what they read mm -hmm. um you know all these different parts because there is going to be a rise of well there is always a celebrity fandom and and, and thought leaders and and it's very difficult to know who to follow because you, you know, as a young kid, you end up following who your friends follow or follow what's cool or not. So it, I think there's such an important, um, onus on our school systems to teach kids to be ready for this. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I spend a lot of time with my kids talking about this, like, yeah. uh, you know, they'll watch a TV show and be like, Oh, this happened. I'm like, yeah, but it's a mm -hmm. TV. What do you mean it's a TV? it's captain underpants dude like this doesn't exist like what do yeah. you mean i can see it i'm like yeah but uh, yeah. and I'm trying to get them to understand that things aren't always as they seem which is it's very difficult to have a conversation to have with yeah. a six-year-old or an eight-year-old but um it's going to be vital just just wait until deep fakes and oh AI. no don't <laughs> i don't want to go into that i know i know um no you you're absolutely right and i think it's i i think it's almost an impossible task yeah. for the education system to, to follow what's going on because it, it's where evolution is happening so quickly it's happening so quickly and it, it's not something that you can you know what you need to teach is principles mm. like you say yeah. be critical of your sources that's a principle mm. that's not something you you know read in a history book yeah uh i I'm sure there are ways to do this yeah. to to teach good core principles. Again, not an expert. No, <laughs> not at all, not at all. But I, that's what I believe. You have to like uh, teach good core principles, mm -hmm. which can then uh, be applied to a moving situation, a, yeah. a tra transforming situation, because things are not gonna be like they are now in five years. No, they're gonna be way different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. How? No one knows. No one knows. No one knows. Wow, this got deep, man. I, yeah. I, I, like, I was generally expecting to come and talk about basketball for three hours, but... It's not how we do it here. <laughs> it's not. It's not how we do it. All right, let's wrap things up. Let's do it. Andy, thank you so much Appreciate for you, being dude. here and uh, putting me in some difficult situations. <laughs> like I said. Trying, trying to get me canceled. Trying to poke the bear. <laughs> Uh, very much appreciate it yeah you too dude um, thanks for everyone listening take care see you next time peace bye